and they all lived happily ever after. Ladies, gentlemen, and variations thereupon, this is Modern Escapers. Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Oodles, and in the end, I set off into the sunset in hopes of more adventure. Joining me today, he ratted out the mob and now lives a happy barn existence in York. It's Stig. It's not boring, mate. Sat on all that gold. Mob gold. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of the prince waking him up with a kiss, he got the seven dwarfs to form a bukkake party resurrection <laughs> on him. It's Biggie. <laughs> Hello, mate. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't hear you. His ears are blocked up. Yeah. <laughs> With dwarf tears. And jizz. she placed her hand on the brain bug and screamed, It's scared! It's scared! Hoorah! It's the birthday girl herself. It's Candy. Uh, hello. 21 again. Happy birthday. And Gadget can't be with us this evening. He's got the shits. <laughs> 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 it's that simple. There's no excuse. The man is stuck on the toilet. In this heat, the poor bugger. <laughs> <laughs> on this episode, we'll be discussing our favourite happy endings. We'll be chatting about what we've done this week and talking shit in the green room, locked behind that paywall. But before all that, do you know what I really need this Father's Day? What's that, mate? I need some biggest breaking news. <laughs> you may already know. But he doesn't, because it's time for Biggie's Breaking News. And I will always bring you the news. <laughs> Sony starts on PS5 exclusives in relation... <laughs> you can't just jump to that, mate, after that. Sorry. I need to process what, that's, I was what just happened a, then. a breakdown or something. You've so, moved into the world of pop now. I thought Whitney Houston was resurrected then. I did. But well, she came true. back from the dead. You channeled Whitney Houston or Dolly Parton, whichever, whichever you decide. Or the donkey wow. from Shrek. I'm, I'm sure, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Sony stance on PS5 exclusives in relation to the PlayStation Plus is almost resolute and won't be changing in the near future. Speaking with games industry, the firm's head of subscriptions, Nick McGuire, we did on the manufacturer's mindset. We're happy with our strategy. Putting games in a bit later in the life cycle has meant that we can't well, we can reach more customers 12, 18, 24 mm-hmm. months after they've been released. We're seeing customers still get excited about those games and jumping in. For us, that's working. I'm so excited. Occasionally there'll be an opportunity to invest in a day to date like Stray, and we will jump on those when they come in. But for us, letting those first party games go to the platform outside the service first, that's working. And that will continue to be our strategy moving forward. <laughs> In other words, it means we want to get some money first. <laughs> yeah. That's ridiculous. They're still adamant. That it's like Game Stray Pass came out working. like day day one because it probably wouldn't have sold because it's like an indie title. It, there were only buzz in the circles of people that like games and we all loved it. Like humanity dropped. I didn't even know that were even out. Mm. And that was day one on, on, but that's a little indie game as well. They're not going to drop the first party exclusives. Ima- imagine like a new Uncharted day one on that, mm. on a service no one's got. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Next. Meanwhile, Microsoft's Matt Booty, great name, has said that temp pole titles may take four to six years to develop on new gen consoles, as opposed to two to three years that were come in pre- uh, common previously. Whilst this executive has said understandably refers to Xbox's own pipeline, it's not hard to imagine a similar shift will occur with Sony. I think the industry and the fans were a little behind the curve on the sort of reset to understand that games aren't two or three years anymore, he told uh, Axis Newsletter. Adding that major AAA I, um... projects will now take anywhere from four to six years. There are higher expectations. The level of fidelity that we're able to deliver just goes up. That's what I was going to say. Getting released broken, though. I think if they they want to, the thing is right. The the, the, think back to eight bit games. 
they probably were made in, in, in a week. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> These games now, they're getting to, to a scale and to a level that they cost more than films. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, the cinematic films take two the big years. Ones. Yeah. yeah. What I was like, going to say was, the, there's a workforce available for people. That, they can be made within two to three years, big sort of first um, party ones, but that would mean hiring a workforce of at least three times as many people, which there yes. are available. There's way more graduates now, yes. but you are talking about eighty to hundred quid games, and people mm-hmm. aren't prepared to pay that. The budgets have gone up, as rightly well. so, really. So that's, I mean. It's one or the other. You can't have both. Mm. Yeah. This is I, I, why the the sorry. This is why the um the special edition versions of games make these companies more money because the tat that they throw into it's really cheap, produced tat. I mean, it's quality. It's it's Etsy style stuff, isn't it? But they're making their money back on those big crates of crap with watches and stuff in them. <laughs> yeah. <you> know what <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I have a look at the new about. Marvel Spider Man Two. The uh, pre-order for that and the, the suits the extra yeah. suits for miles and peter aren't brilliant to be honest it doesn't make i don't know about you guys about but that. when i when i when i played when i played um the original spider-man not much, so much for miles morales i like the original suit that he gets given because i feel like it's canon yeah I, I switch i'm saying i'm saying we a lot of skins on games i like the box art skin on things cause i it's, switch it's what i see is canon some of them had like special abilities as well. But you um, could put the, ability, the abilities on the original suit, couldn't you? Yeah, you but I, I kind of fuck around with stuff. It's like similar Hogwarts. You know, you can just you, you can yeah. keep the abilities, but change the look, can't you? I, but, I change clothes if, if like, like you said, like, like you're playing like Elden Ring and those clothes give you powers. And stuff. Yeah, absolutely. But the in terms of the development of a game, it, it completely makes sense, especially like if it's something brand new. I mean, if, yeah. if it's something that's you can't have it both ways either because what annoys me as well is if it's somewhat like God of War or Spider-Man mm. yes it's reusing assets of course it's going to reuse mm. assets it's an, it's a sequel and everyone goes oh, it just looks like DLC Doesn't like, they've done anything I was like of course it does mm. they've done loads like, especially if it's set in one place like New York <laughs> but look yeah. at the look at the actual graphical difference of New York in Spider-Man yeah. compared to the screenshots from the new game and it's night yeah. and day how much better it yeah. looks but of course they're going to reuse assets the map the already made, wasn't and it? the map because it's already made, and they're adding to yeah. it anyway. They've already said there's going to be um, extra Queens. areas, it's Queens and somewhere else. They've said, yeah, a lot yeah, of things being Brooklyn. converted to the new Unreal Engine as well. I understand. Those is being converted to Unreal, yeah. like CD Projekt. It's, a, it's a simple process now, isn't it? They've yeah. made it easier to convert. And Unreal as well. It, it never used to be particularly good for open world RPGs, and I think mm. this latest version, the, the amount of um, games that are going to Unreal and um, the new. Um, Zenimax MMO is going to Unreal as well, which is like unheard of MMOs on a Unreal Engine. So this this new version is just well. leaps and bounds better than the last. Mm. Iteration. That Matrix demo was in Unreal, wasn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that, yeah, that, that was one first, of the first demos it? in yeah. Unreal Five. Yeah, that's probably the best looking game I've ever played. Oh, mm-hmm. So incredible, <laughs> the graphics on that was incredible. Yeah. So yeah, that demo, but, yeah, but if you want that, you're gonna have to wait. Like, yeah. yeah. You can't Good have look. it both ways. Like either you rush them and you get broken, shitty looking games, or you just let there's them one way, work on stuff. There, there is, and and I hope they're all listening. There is one way to circumnavigate this issue. Triple A's take six years as long as these companies like Microsoft and Sony are supporting indies. If they fully prop them up and support them, there will be a, a slew of games that'll never stop. Well, that, that's I mean, how you do it. You that's fine way, for us. In that but, way, it's a win-win. Because we'll yeah, get yeah, we'll exactly. get this sudden surge of really good indie games that don't take as long, and sometimes people don't want to spend that amount of time playing a game. Exactly, like a six, ten, twelve hour game for me is perfect when you haven't got a great yep. deal of time anyway. I think I think it's good. I think it's good for the consumer in that way. Yeah, I played and completed a two hour game this week. Oh, well, then. so did I actually. Yeah. Um, probably not the same game, but it's no, just it won't be. that's how you circumnavigate. That's how they did it in the past. That's how your Mega Drive generation, your Super Nintendo generation, it wasn't always your Nintendo and your Sega games that were coming out. It was third party, smaller titles. And it just it just it feeds you while you're while you're waiting for the big blockbuster releases and that's I'm fine with that. Yeah, the like, problem I is I play so Switch was... more than anything and most of my Switch libraries independent games. There is a lot of vocal people who just they all they want is the big temple AAA games, and they don't well, fuck them. Yeah, fuck them guys. <laughs> but like, if you aren't willing to seek out other games and try new things, 
I've tried loads of new things in the last several years and found that I've actually really enjoyed them, whereas generation before, I probably never gave them a look in. Yeah. Just... No, I'm saying I've had to mature about it over the years. Yeah. It's like, at first, at first I'm like, I'm scoffing at these, um, uh, these service games, but then they are the perfect like antidote for these these lulls because they're always live they're always going they're always changing they're evolving and that is probably another way to to get around this issue as well just keep them keep these online games just pumping pumping like like um, biggie loves loves his call of duty and stuff isn't you never bored because it's always evolving yeah i've just started season it's clever four and yeah it's more of the same it's clever it's still dragging it's in. not for me but it's yeah. clever Still uh, delivers technically yeah, what yeah. yeah, give them as long as they need. That's what I said. Rather than a complete. I, yeah, I game. don't care. Yeah, I don't. Absolutely. I've got. I've got ten thousand games to play in the meantime. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Who cares? Clear those backlogs. Who cares? Yeah, exactly. Next, Dan Hauser, chief writer for the vast majority of the Grand Theft Auto franchise. Dan Hauser. <laughs> As uh, officially unveiled, he's t- <laughs> sorry. There's a wrestler called Dan Housen. Look him up. No, Dan Housen talks like this. He's very good and very evil. Dan Housen may also speak like that. I don't actually. I've never heard him speak. As uh, officially unveiled, he's Scottish. His new outfit, Absurd Ventures, it's called, and he intends to create original IPs for you. Ready? All platforms and formats. That's what he said. Oh, well, good on him. You know, he's, he's got pedigree, mate. Oh yes, can't argue with him. He started a revolution in single-player games. As and does. obviously Rockstar went on from strength to strength. They wouldn't be the company that they, they are without him. When they were, um, what were they? Uh, were it 2K? No. So they were a different company, weren't they, originally? But, yeah, fantastic. Good on them. I look forward to seeing what you've got. Next. Yeah. To the world of film and TV. Uh, three Star Wars movies have now got their release dates. The first one is May 22. <sighs> 2026, so we've still got a little wait to go. But interestingly, the next one is December 18, 2026. So that's like a roughly six month, maybe eight month window. 2026, I will be dead by then, man. <laughs> I wonder if that'd be a <laughs> I wonder if that'd be a part one and part two sort of thing going on there. One less person to pay it on the Patreon, it's fine. <laughs> yes, yeah, true, mate. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast won't be going in 2026, I can promise you now. Yeah, it will. And the uh, third one will be a year later in 2027. I think that that's probably the first all of time them will get moved in two within that short space of time. Fact: I all s- of them will get moved. Mm. Every, every single one of them. It takes Just like years to make Star Wars films. <laughs> Fucking years. Also, one will be only one of them will be a main Star Wars yeah. like yeah. cat film, and the rest will be sp- and the other two will be spin offs. That's what I reckon. The yeah, December one, the December one, Ray Skywalker. The, well, it, this that, that's what it is. It's going to be about Ray training up a new load of Jedi's. Apparently, but that'll be the December. And I bet one, one of them goes evil. <gasps> yeah, because Star Wars is always Christmas. And <laughs> well, maybe we'll get a Christmas the special. Other two, <laughs> the other two maybe. will get moved. I bet you. Just like all the Marvel stuff has happened, and all the other Disney yeah. stuff. I've noticed a lot of films lately. They've got like a, like just um, a placement date, aren't they? Especially with this yeah. writer's strike going I'm on. Like, how can you how can you commit to a date with the writer's strike and then the actors' strike is right around After. the corner and then <laughs> yeah. the director directors are production about whether strike. they're whether they're gonna strike as well. Like all three yeah. guilds might be striking very soon. So how can you commit to any of these dates? Well it's funny yeah. you mentioned that, Stick, because there's also been it's some like, wow. major MCU delays as well. Deadpool oh, and wow. Brave New World are coming out in uh, twenty four now. As well, sorry, as well as mm. Thunderbolts. And then following that... In... I wasn't expecting them this year. What are you? <laughs> and in uh, 2025, yeah. Blade, Fantastic Four, Kang Dynasty, and Secret Wars. Ooh. They need to put Blade in the bin. That, that's just been absolutely <laughs> mud with disaster from start. Will you stop Stake doing in the this? heart. I... Blade's one of my... Blade's one of my favourite characters of all time, mate. Just let let it let it happen. Let it let it just marinate slowly. Take your time. Take ten I years. Would, I would love for it to marinate and be getting more and more juicy as we're talking about it, but it's not going to be, is it? Just no. think when everyone's wearing long black coats again, leather jackets, and we've all got stompers on, and this is the time we, we're coming back, can't we? Oh, I know, but it's too hot to think about that right now. <laughs> we've my all got yeah, my leather jackets. <laughs> Retired. Interestingly enough, though, um, Deadpool's been pulled forward. 
Nice. The rest of them have all been pushed back. Mm. And that one's been pulled forward, which suggests to me that... Because they said they were going ahead with it, regardless yeah, of the strike. Yeah, he's not allowed to ad-lib in the meantime, is he? He's not allowed to... Yeah, he's not allowed to improvise or ad-lib. Because, because he's a writer. Because it's counted as a writer's credit. Yeah. And... So that suggests to me that they're happy. They must be happy with the script. That script must be bang on. Mm. Yeah. If there's no way that Ryan Reynolds is going to do this, especially with Hugh Jackman in there, if the script isn't good, he adores that character as yeah. well. Yeah. So that, that that script must be fine if they're going ahead with that. Mm. I mean, I like seeing Ryan Reynolds on screen. Even his worst films are always enjoyable. So Deadpool Sometimes. one and two are fantastic. I'm not so sure about Sometimes. Secret Wars, though. Uh, and the correction, that's in 2027. Um, I've just reread that, going through some Spider-Man stuff at the minute. and It's not the best arc ever, is it? <sighs> the first one's okay, but the second one's weird as fuck. <clears throat> really existential. Yeah, they went, to, they went to some proper strange places. <laughs> just please hope they rewrite You've got to remember, <laughs> secret, the, second, the second Secret Wars came right after the crossover with DC, one of the biggest events in comic book history. So it was just a lull. <laughs> just like, yeah, here we go. Let's try and yeah, sell these books good. again. Yeah, but it wasn't the, even the Infinity Saga kind of ends a bit yeah. shit, doesn't it? Compared to what we got in the films. Yeah. Like yeah, the, Thanos, film, the film ended it way better. Yeah. Thanos is still around in his helicopter in, in the books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's one time he gets arrested by the police, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can, you imagine, can, can you imagine 10 years of MCU build up for the cops to just haul him off in <laughs> handcuffs? I am inevitable. You're like coming down there he is, officer. Me. The stand Big still, purple one with a dangly chin. <laughs> Yeah, let's, let's, let's remember, guys, these books, some of these books are 70 years old. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Just take your time, man. I mean, if anything, MCU needs resurrect. I mean, look, luckily, judging from this, this Flash discussion, that there's, there's not much competition still, so they've, they've got time to kill. Well, more on that later. Uh, just the last one on Marvel. Um, the uh, universal deal for Hulk theatrical distribution rights has now gone back to Marvel. Great news. This is great news. You can Hulk finally do now. the Ruffalo film that they've always wanted to do. Because, yeah, they had, to, they had to claw that from Universal, didn't they? I need, and, um, I need Hulk to be back to being a raging monster, though. Well, he could. He could. Obviously, in the canon now, I mean, spoiler alert, Scar exists, so there's a, there's a good way of getting them to fight. You can get multiple Hulks in. If if they really wanted to, they could split him off with Grey Hulk and have Rage Monster, and Grey Hulk's the one that talks. Or World War mm-hmm. Hulk. World War Hulk's fantastic. Mm. But, like, just... He's just a bit wishy-washy now, and he? Now that he can now that he can be as big as the Hulk and strong, but he's, you know, keeps smart. the human... Yeah, the smart human side of him. I, I, I just mm. need... If they're going to do a film, they just need to kind of have him. They need to do what they did in the books. The he tries to, cure it, tries to cure himself and he splits in two. Yeah. That's it. So you can have a rage happen. monster, you can have a grey one that chats. Different, different actor, don't matter. Just do it. Just do that and have a Red Hulk antagonist. Do it. Do it. Do it. We're going to do World War Hulk out there. <clears throat> yeah, they should do World War Hulk. Fun. Was that sorry, so Candy? I was just saying, do you think Ruffalo's even still up for it? Because yes, he, I mean, he, he loves it. But he's getting on a little bit, isn't he? Not that that really matters because he's CG, but especially because Robert <laughs> Downey Jr. has left as well. And they were the sort of buddies, weren't they, in the franchise? So If they really wanted to do the, the swan song for that character, they need to do it where the Hulk's the last known creature on Earth because he's immortal in books. And he's there at End of World, just sat there. With his, hand, his, his, his chin in his hands like, fucking hell. Think of just, you know what I mean? The whole, the whole world's gone and he's just sat there like, I can't get off this rock. I don't need to eat. I'm immortal. That's the that's the kind of introspective Hulk well, story. They, I they like. could kind of do something with that and mix it in with Kang Dynasty with because he's kind yeah. of timey wimey and he like yeah yeah yeah. So you could all kind of do that and not ha- actually yeah because that's what they used to do. That's what they used to do in the. I know I always app back on the books, but they used to make the Hulk a raging monster to everyone that can see him, but is in a monologue. We're talking as Bruce Banner. And it was really smart how they used to do it. And nowadays, the Hulk's just someone that they like to square up against someone else, like Wolverine. And it's like, yeah, it's cool. It's really cool, but it's not. It's not. Yeah, like an introspective Hulk. I just, I, I get what they did with Smart Hulk, and it kind of worked. 
but yeah. it can't be like that going forward because no, he's, no, no. he's a pacifist. Like yeah. even yeah. shown in Endgame, he doesn't like to fight. Like when he punches, when he kicks that cat, yeah, just kicks so that cat. We need to have a bit of Hulk just going fucking mental. Yeah, we do, we do. Cool. Next, as alluded to, the Flash has got off to a rough start. Uh, DC Films opening below <laughs> Black Adam at sixty-one million dollars. So, what do you fucking expect? <laughs> and have you heard about the baby soon? Yes, well, I haven't heard about any scenes. <laughs> it's been reversed on Twitter on it, so it looks. <laughs> <laughs> so the original, I, I think it's like movie. an opening scene. Yeah. Has the Flash saving all these tumbling babies from a hospital collapsing nursery, <laughs> and he's improvising different ways to catch them all with a stretcher, inclu- including off. sticking a CG baby into an unplugged microwave in midair. The scene the ends naturally with him taking the infant out of the microwave to hand him over to a traumatized nurse. But as Stiggy said on Twitter, people are playing it in reverse. So it looks like he puts the baby in the microwave first. <laughs> Why they thought that would be um, a, right, a great idea for putting that in a movie, I just don't know. This film has taken fucking ages to come out. Um, and obviously the star, they've had problems. So that's caused even more problems for the production and the release of this film. And it just doesn't look very good. It, in a month where we already saw like one of the best multiverse films ever yeah. um, to, to release that. And... It's what this is the four, fifth multiverse kind of comic book film we've had it's in the last few the fourth, years. It's also the fourth on screen version of the Flashpoint Paradox we've seen. Yeah. It's the only one they care about when he goes back and guess who's alive? It's, it's Bruce Wayne's dad and he's Batman in that one. Oh, we've seen it all before. <laughs> <laughs> do a different one do it when the Flash has to save the universe where he has to run on the galactic treadmill and he <laughs> dies of old age do something cool the Flash is a cool character and I have heard that it's not a bad film it's quite good fun Try but it's not yeah, enough yeah. it's not enough to me, for me to go to cinema for no. and the CGI looks fucking shocking in places <sighs> just hurry up James Gunn and sort it out mate <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing as well fucking Film out. You, you, you had this film taking ages to come out, and in between all that, they've they've come out and said, "Right, we're restructuring it all, so none of it matters." So people are going to be like, "What's the point of me going to see this film if I know there's no consequences or follow up?" This to is it? why they've What's done. The point? Clearly, this is why they've done the Flashpoint paradox, so they can reset every timeline imaginable. Because that's the ending of that that, that story. But it's I don't think a simple way of just going. Nothing exists anymore. It's start again. Woo! Yeah, but I just Everyone's don't think different. they'll bring Ezra, Ezra Miller back because the problems they've caused. Oh, well, they have caused problems. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised he didn't batter a cameraman while uh, while they were recording. <laughs> Bloody hell, honestly. Next. Speaking of the delays, all the Avatar sequels have been delayed. Avatar 3 will be out in 2025, 4 no! in 2029, and number 5 in 2031, where people will actually will they give a fuck at this point. Jesus. <laughs> I vowed really after that last out? one. That, last, that out. last one I saw, I vowed I'm not going to see anymore because that was the most boring, beautiful film I've ever seen. I'm not going to the cinema to see the third. Fool me That's once, boring. shame on me. Fool me twice. Yeah, exactly, mate. I'm saying it's I'll so Shame on you, fool cool. me the other way around, whatever it is. But yeah, it's too long. <laughs> you just I didn't turned like into either film. George Bush. I did. I did. I did a <laughs> fucking George Bush run it. <laughs> fool is a fool. Uh... <laughs> when were they supposed to be out? How long are they delayed by? Oh, I don't know. Uh, 2025, 2029, 2031. So a couple of years. <laughs> 2031. That In is what? the future. It That's was... like where Jetsons live. He originally <laughs> said it was going to be every two years, so we're meant to get the next one next year, and then 2026 and 2028. So the pull of these films was always that it was never the story. It was always that it was an incredible tech demo and just the graphics and the just the gloriousness. Mm-hmm. When of, is... Um, and then if it's delayed cyber- by two, three years, it's not going to be cutting edge anymore. We'll have seen it. So when, when's, when's Cyberpunk set? What is it, Cyberpunk? 2077. 77. That's when the last one will come out. <laughs> 2077. <laughs> when we've all got like prosthetic what, limbs. What annoys me more about this, out of us. right, is this is taking James Cameron's time up. Mm. He's now going to be spending another eight years working Underwater. on these films. <laughs> At, like, that guy could 
do so much more. And they are, people love them. They look incredible. The tech is incredible. I mean, the water in that film looks absolutely amazing. Have you asked anyone the that's film watched is them and loved dull. them? Have you asked them what the stories of Avatar? I've, I've asked loads of people over and they've gone, oh, you know, bleh, they stick their hair in arses and stuff. I'm like, that's <laughs> not the story, mate. It's not the story. Like, I can predict what these next Avatar films are. So we've had the air ones on the first one. We're forest fire. Ones. We've had the water. We're going to have a volcano tribe. Then we're going to have... Earth. Oh, what, what can we have? That? Underground tribe. It's just so predictable. It's just stupid and boring and dull. Get, oh, just fucking go back to Terminator or something. Make that good again. One last stab at it before Arnie dies. <laughs> fucking hell. Come on. Fury. I'd like him to do the Elite Battle Angel sequel. Because he was oh, the first he, film looked good. He was he was originally meant to direct the oh first one. Oh my god, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus, it's going it back. Was a good bit. film. Good I'd, film. Ra- I'd rather him do that. Yeah. 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 Next. Uh, a few of you would be happy. Apple has renewed Silo for a second season already. Hooray! Good. I'm getting I'm more and more convinced that this episode. first series is not going to cover the entire of the first book. I don't I mean, think. It's pretty close, based on episode eight. I mean, oh, actually, I haven't seen the latest ones. Having said that, so yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> from what yeah. I saw, it seems to be going about. It's heading in the same direction in a slightly tangential way. Uh, like, I. It says this is covering the first book. Really? Yeah. Right. Based on that. And also, I, I, without spoiling anything, I just don't know how the fuck you do season two. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's I might not if no one's watching it. No, but there's, there's something, <laughs> <laughs> something in that book which doesn't work visually. Everyone dies. <laughs> no, I'm struggling to remember because I, I read all the books back to back. I'm struggling to remember where the uh, first book actually ended so maybe i'm just misremembering but i feel like it it went f- way further in to the f- into the story than where we're going with the uh, with the tv no, series no i think you might be mixing book 1 and 3 Probably up am. Cause, yeah cuz yeah maybe cuz i think most of what i remember of book 2 um is following a slightly different story rather than the one we're seeing now mm-hmm. trying very carefully not to <laughs> say any spoilers <laughs> God, that's this is the most vague discussion I've ever been privy to. It's terrible, yeah, isn't it? It, is t- it is terrible because if you mentioned fucking terrible radio, there. Those there's who have read jacked, it will know what I mean. Two, exactly. If you've read the book Gadget, will know exactly what we mean. But and then anyone else that's read it, but it, it's it, it's impossible if, to if you, even if, drop any gadget, hints without it being a if, massive. If you know spoiler. what they mean, if you know what they mean in the edit, just drop in. Yes, I know what they mean. Yes, I know what they mean. I also agree with Candy. I think that this season is going to be first half of the first book. Please. <laughs> just for just for clarity, because fucking hell, me and Biggie. Then, wow. He knows <laughs> what. He knows <laughs> what. What? Next. Finally, Stranger Things season five is adding Terminator star Linda Hamilton to its ensemble cast. Cool. They love adding those stats, mm. like all the stars, don't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah, it's really a love letter to eight. Is f- through and through, isn't it? Yeah, last season yeah. this one, isn't it? So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, they're done. They're Please ending. be. It, I think it's going to be like a, a, another couple of long episodes again as well. Yeah, I think they've come out and said that it's going to be shorter than the last season. But then I think yeah, like three episodes or something, it like needs to hour end. and a half episodes. Yeah, maybe six. I think but but it, it's great. Having said that, though, the the previous season that came out, it changed a lot between because they managed to film a lot of it before um, COVID happened, and then yes, so much did. changed between that and when it actually finally released. They released so many more episodes that yeah. I mean, who knows? Anything could happen. And again, the writer strike. We don't even know if we'll the see kids it. Kids are we're so gonna much it. older; they're going to have to yeah. do another time jump again. Mm. They are like. Adults. So the lad who played now. Lucas the other day, he's got like a full beard and everything. I was yeah, like, <laughs> the blokes. They're all yeah. blokes and stuff. It's think, fucked up. I think Finn Wolfhard is the only one that seems to have like, stayed the same. Yeah, he's baby facing <laughs> it still. Oh, it's crazy, man. We're going to have to do a time skip, like they're in college. Or I can't, how can you do a time called? skip the way that it ended? Season four ended. I don't know. I, I genuinely going don't straight know. He's in, it's going straight into the. Shit. Hopefully, oh, yeah. they, might, they might have filmed some bits for this already before. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Before they wrapped, or well, they used that um, de aging tech. It's awful though. Mm. For, for a full an hour and a half, it's awful de aging tech. Makes you sick. 
because you can see it and you're like, oh, they're not real eyes. <laughs> once, you, once you spot it, it's done, isn't it? Yeah, you're it's like, oh, awful. It's, it's, That's why right, this Indiana Jones is going to scare me, this one. Yeah, like, he's, <laughs> he's, <laughs> his he's got the face of a 20, 30 year old, but he's, yeah. he's running like an 80 year old man. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his knees. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That was the problem with the Irishman. They made him look yeah, young, but oh, God, it's terrible. <laughs> he could, it's he's awful. moving like a seventy-year-old man. It's like instead yeah. of a whip, he's got a cross. And they didn't look. Married. He didn't look like De Niro looked back then. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's oh God, it's awful. I hate the aging technology. But I know it's necessary sometimes, but fuck it. I'll just get someone that looks like him. Let's do that. <sighs> Next, finally, over to the Weird World Web. Mourners at the wake of an Ecuadorian woman were startled to discover she was still alive. A hospital doctor in the city of <laughs> Babahoyo declared Bella Montoya, 76, dead following a suspected stroke. She was placed in a coffin and taken to a funeral parlour where relatives had held a vigil before her planned burial. When after almost five hours they opened the coffin to change her clothes ahead of the funeral, the woman suddenly gasped for air. Her son said, My mum started to move. <laughs> my mum started to move her left hand to open her eyes her mouth she struggled to breathe video taken by Mourner shows her lying in an open coffin struggling to breathe while other complains that uh, sorry another complains that an ambulance they called has not yet arrived minutes later I don't laugh at this I so mean, funny. I, I'm so confused as to why like did, why they fast track this funeral so much yeah some some, no, some religions are like really fast aren't they? They, they, they they get the funeral services day of the day and stuff like that that's crazy Especially some cultures as well some cultures have the body in, on display for weeks she still ended up dying I was going to say she's not oh. hanging on in there is she? that's why I shouldn't be fucking laughing she died today Although, but imagine like <gasps> I love this. I love this I'm last bit. So this came from the BBC website. So they obviously got an expert, and they asked Dr. Stephen oh, Hughes, I... a senior lecturer, amateur scientist, yeah, in medicine at Anglia Ruskin University School of Medicine in Chelmsford. He said such cases are very uncommon, but he points out that death is a process. And he says sometimes somebody may look like they're dead, but they're not quite dead. And then he says careful examination Brilliant. is necessary to confirm. Death. What an yeah, expert like, opinion. I'm glad we got that opinion then. Wow. Did no one just check did no one check a pulse? <laughs> you can have a really low pulse rate though, can't you? But like, still. Like really like oh, oh, I just think it's negligence. It's just gross neg- negligence on the like highest fucking level ever. It's disgusting. Wish you rich it's with it with also the, ki- hilarious. With the, with the kids trying to like get it done quickly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Nip it in bo, come on, get get about it. She's she's scratching on coughing. Shh. <laughs> I think it's funny. I know I shouldn't laugh, but it's gallows humour, isn't it, in this yeah. situation? Although she fuck did actually die today. Oh, yeah. fuck's sake. That wasn't a happy ending. <laughs> no. Woo! Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one. Let's see if we can get some happy endings out of this. Candy, it's been your birthday week. Oh. Not month. Birthday week. What have you been up to, mate? I have done so much. What do you want to hear about? Do you want to hear about Black Mirror? Do you want to hear about the Final Fantasy 16 demo? Do you want to hear about Spider Verse? What no. we're, missing a ga- we're missing a gadget, so we've got a little bit of time. We'll, we'll talk so Spider Verse you... in the green yeah, room. Yeah, we'll Spider Verse in green room. We'll do that because we've already discussed that. Mm. So start with uh, Final Fantasy. Well, start with that. As I, did you play this one, Doodles? <clears throat> Yeah, I thought you might have done, so feel free, to, feel free to jump in on this. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely a much darker, more grown-up Final Fantasy, isn't it? Like, I wasn't fully... What, you mean the shagging in it? I, I didn't get that... For, well, I didn't get... I got to the strangulation, but that, that was a bit kind of sexy. Yeah, <laughs> sexy strangulation as well. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of effing and jeffing, isn't there? And not just a couple of F-bombs, all over the place. Quite kids enjoyed getting, it. Kids getting killed. There's all sorts of yeah. stuff. Yeah. So just um, full, dis- full disclosure, I didn't get to the end of the demo. And the reason that was was because I want to start it again when I get it in uh, however many days, like tomorrow. I'm just going to keep the I'm gonna keep the save from that because I did a really good couple of runs on it. It does cross me, like, over, third, doesn't it? My third playthrough, I got like... Just me ranking my sky eye because I just got so good. Because I treat I'm treating this now like a Devil May Cry, and Stig knows he's a firm fan of it. You try and beat your scores on each level, don't you, Stig? Mm. Yeah, and that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing with battles, and you can. So, yeah. So anyway. yeah, I stopped probably about an hour or so into it just because I do want to sort of start it again and just. It's a long demo. It's so about is. three, 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 four hour demo. Yeah. So I got to a bit where you're fighting goblins, and I did the main goblin boss, and that that was it. Aren't they ugly? Them little goblins. Well, do you know what got me is. Um, 
The goblins had more detail in their character models than some of the main characters did. Like in your party, yes. your main your main character, Clive, Final Fantasy Clive, has got a lot of detail. Your mates, not so much. So they're not main characters. That's I, why I mate. was going to say I, I fear <laughs> for their Final future. Fantasy. Why? Like it's <laughs> this big, like epic kind of fantasy world yep. as Clive and Rod. There's a Rodney as well. And there's more than a Rodney. There's a Stuart. Barnabas. Ooh. <laughs> Stuart, and he's quite a main character. He's, he's, he's got he's, he's got a um, a, a bio on him. So nice. Stuart's in there. See, I, I started. Kenneth? I started, and then I was like, "No, I need to finish my other games first. So yeah. I just turned That's it off it. and went and played my other games that I want to get done. So I can- you know exactly what I did notice with this demo, though, it's good. Again, I know they were designing this for fans of the of the of the the other games and newcomers. They've got they've actually done what they promised to do. They've got a story mode where it's like. You, it's just, you can just fly through battles, you can just enjoy it, it looks spectacular. And you've also got the hardcore Devil May Cry fan mode mm. where you really fucking, you've got to time them combos, them parries. The parries in this are great, the magic's great. The icon battles, I don't know if you got that far. I didn't get that far, no. hell. The, That's the most spectacular boss I've ever fought, and it were a demo. So it's, it starts off with a, a small icon battle, doesn't it? So the actual starting yes. scene you're playing is, I think, it's the So Phoenix, the icon battle it? at the end of the demo is that one that it starts off at. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So my issue with the... Uh, and actually going back to what you just um, said about there being story mode, it's about mm. time they did that because every Final Fantasy it is, is open to anyone that wants to start. Like, if you see the, the, the title Final Fantasy sixteen. You think, yep. shit, I need to have played the other 15. You don't. I think no, that don't. most people know, but you, you don't. So it, because there's a story mode, it's way more accessible than you think. If you want to start Final Fantasy now, just go for yeah. it. Um, yeah. my, perfect for it. My issue was, I, and I don't know if it's because I didn't get that far into it, and I don't know if it's because I didn't have a massive arsenal of spells or anything, but I found the, I didn't particularly like the combat system. And what I found myself doing was spamming fire quite a lot and doing loops of the enemies <laughs> until they get down. Of course you did. Yeah, and, and that was it. So for Do me, you not like Devil May Cry then and Bayonetta and stuff like that? I I'm haven't played Devil May Cry in years, so I think that might wow. be... Yeah, that might be an issue. Wow. But yeah, no, I, was, I found myself spam, spamming a bit, especially compared to... I really like the battle fi- uh, system with Final Fantasy XV. I really liked it with Final Fantasy VII Remake. That, that as well. was the uh, they used the they used the Kingdom Hearts battle system, didn't they, on fifteen? Yeah. So for me, that was I could just pick that up and play. But yeah, I've, uh, it's probably just because I'm not used to it. But I didn't find the fighting that great. Um, oh, mate, it's really good. I, I must have just needed to get further into it. So which when is you complete fine, the demo, when you complete the demo, it unlocks a special bonus arena. Nice. Where you souped up, you're level fifty, and you could just fucking go. to Oh, hell, you can mate. let loose. Oh, that's... I am a slayer. Yeah, well, I slayer. just I can't, I can't wait. Every moment I play this, I did not, and ultimately I did, but for reasons I've already said, I did not want to put it down. Like I've struggled recently yeah. concentrating on games, and I thought maybe I've just haven't been in the right headspace for it. But I don't think that's what it is. I don't think a game has gripped me enough to just keep me going. And because the, the story's so mature. Yeah, well, for the, every moment that I play this, it's like I do not want to put this down. I want to keep playing. I want to know what happens. It's a good sign. And it's the, did you know it's the best? The, the best thing I noticed about it is the active time law system. That was cool. Got, yeah. Where you any time, any cutscene, any moment in the game, you hold the the pad down. It tells you who's talking, what their allegiance is, who they are. Do you know, like on Game of Thrones, you don't know fucking anything. Yeah. It does that for you at any time. So you're like, who are they talking about? Hold down the pet, it'll tell you. I'm and it so happy. The moment. This, yeah. I'm so happy. It's so know. fucking good. I am prone to it's... being a little bit forgetful or not paying attention Same. 100% all the time. So I'm really happy that's there. Not to mention a lot of the games, um, I can't remember his name, but that particular writer. Some of the stories have been a little bit convoluted, like Kingdom Hearts 3, for example. So I think if there is that constant reminder there, you do need a refresher. That is just absolutely perfect. I think that's going to be. Did you notice the guards at the beginning in the, when, when you're walking around as young Clive? Playing Dungeons and Dragons in the corner. When he oh, went, oh, D12. No. That's well, they sat down rolling. I was like, oh, now. Nah. And, and apparently, <laughs> apparently, the creators of this have, have recently, in the past like 10 years, got into Dungeons and Dragons. So there's going to be a lot of that. For, for, like, they used to do Dungeons and Dragons references in the older games, but they got rid of that when all the steampunk stuff came out. Yeah. But so w- w- this is just a D&D game with DMC. 
combat and just uh, well i mean you could almost say that about any rpg game can't you i mean ultimately they're all kind of based on uh D. Yeah. but that said though if uh, they are all recently D fans we can probably expect a board game out of it so that'll be cool too yeah <laughs> I, I, I do think his name clive as well suits him because he's the right whiny little bitch <laughs> <laughs> what is it with main characters in Final Fantasy always being whiny little bitches? But Luckily, can... in this game, you, you'd be older, Clive, don't you, later on, and he's like... Ugh. And is he not, like, the oldest um, main character we've ever had as well? Like, normally they're 17, yep. 18, 19, and I think yep. old Clive is, what, 32? Oh, my Th- God, the old father. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's got a beard, oh, no! <laughs> they're, all, they're, all <laughs> whiny, they're all whiny bitches in Devil May Cry as well, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, they are. Oh, Charlotte call it Devil May Clive. <laughs> Devil May Clive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Nero in Devil May Cry 4? Fucking hell, you want a moaning cow. <laughs> and also, yeah, I, I, I can't wait for it. I'm really can't. excited. But yeah, I don't know if it's going to be. I think it's. When is it out? The 20th, 21st? So any day Thursday. now, basically. So yeah, when we go live, it'll be out. I don't think I'm going to jump. for Father's Day. I'm so happy. Nice. Oh, that's a good prezi. Yes. But yeah, I'm going to. Yes. As soon as I've finished finally finished Hogwarts I'm going to get onto it whether that's on the day I don't know oh one more thing I will say and I think we chatted about it in the discord as well the difference between um, fidelity and graphics is just completely negligible you could, it, yeah, yeah. It, take, take and pick in, gra- and pick. in graphic <laughs> in graphic mode I didn't notice it dropping between 60 frames per set no neither did I <laughs> graphics mode I, the way I test it is normally to look in the water and the reflections and everything yeah Switching between I the two, had, I, 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 had, I had graphics mode on, and it were it were a firm four K sixty frames per second. Yeah, I didn't notice oh, any. It's drop. insane! It's insane. So there's no Starfield. point in having. I think it's. I think it can go. I think it can go up to like ninety frames per second on um, frame rate mode. <laughs> but on some fighting games like this, you kind of sometimes do for parry windows and stuff. Yeah, it's insane. But again, it's going to be one hundred and fifty gigabytes. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll be well worth it. But and yeah. the install's about 70 gigabytes, apparently, as well, off the disk. Get those hard drives <laughs> upgraded, <laughs> guys. <laughs> be, I'm telling ready. you now, it's a 100, 100 gig game to download, and then there'll be at least a 20 to 30 gig day one patch as well. Oh, there always yeah. is. Always any game. 100%. It's fine. Clear up your hard drives. It. Need those expendable hard know. drives, eh, hey, Biggie? What are them? I've never heard of them before. <laughs> Were you not there when they got announced? It was huge. The world went crazy changed for them. Changed the world. <laughs> Did it change the world? All oh, right. For me. Like Steve Jobs. And what? For me. The what else are we doing, Candid? Let's do Black Mirror, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> I've watched the first two episodes of Black Mirror. I've not watched any yet. Stop. If you've seen the first two, you've seen the two best ones. Oh. That's oh, not that's to, that's terrible not to news. put down the series as a whole. So last time we got mm. Black Mirror was 2019, and we, we only then we got... Up. What was it? Three episodes, I think. So we haven't seen Black Mirror in a long time. We got Bandersnatch. We had the Death to Twenty Twenty and Death to Twenty Twenty One, which is still Charlie Brooker and kind of same production, same company. production company. But we haven't actually had proper Black Mirror since for a good no. while. All the episodes were pretty good. They were pretty good. It didn't not add not mind blowing like San Junipero. Like yeah, I think that the, the good tr- shit. The trouble is they didn't take as many risks. In terms of the writing, and because of that, you didn't get the high, the really high highs and the really low lows that some of the usual Black Mirror series, like I think maybe series one, two, three, it's, the best episodes were so so good and so cleverly written, and they really yeah. were something that you really never really encountered before. But the bad ones just were absolute fails; they just didn't hit. And I so really didn't have... like that one that everyone liked where the robot dog were chasing that one. I like. didn't like that one either, yeah, the black and white one. fucking shite. Yeah. It was boring. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So, yeah, all of these episodes are quite good. So you see, so the starting episode is Jonah's Awful. And I was laughing my way through that one. I thought it was really good. That was... blew my mind because I was like, what, 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 what? And I don't know what they've done. I don't know. Everyone loves Charlie Brooker now. He's just got stars on every episode. Well, Black Mirror is the thing to be stars. in, isn't it? Yeah, this this is jam packed. We're like Oscar winners. Kate Blanchett, the girl from Shit's Creek. Um, oh, who else was it? Um, Michael Sarah, just in the first episode. Yeah. And yeah. I think this is probably and Sel- Selma Hayek. Selma Hayek, yeah, Sel- Selma motherfucking Hayek. I think mm. this is probably. I'd lick her toes. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> is that from um, Quentin did. Breaking Bad in there as well? Do I say? An image of him. And the third one. I yeah, Jesse, it, yeah, Jesse Pinkman's in it. Jesse Pinkman. I can't remember his real name. <clears throat> That's his real name. Yeah, That's actual real name. Jesse. 
Uh, second one, Lock Henry is another good one. Fantastic. Um, I think that was fantastic. That I didn't see. No, I'm not going to spoil anything. I didn't see that coming at all. I was like, yes. That's and I ideas. love an episode set in Scotland on anything because it's such a mystical country. And when you're out there in the sticks in Scotland, it's just breathtaking. What I like about it, the first it, it had, it had It had Podrick in it from Game of Thrones, didn't it? Yeah. Podrick Payne. <laughs> Uh, well, what I like about the first two episodes as well is they're all very like I know I take the piss out of it, but they are very meta. They take I can't remember what they call the equivalent of Netflix. It's called they call it like Dingleberry or something. And um, like strawberry or something. Dingleberry. Strawberry bums or uh, Dingleberry is a little bit of poo that sticks onto your ass when, you, when, when you've got an airy ass. That's a Dingleberry. It's the title of the pod. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a scent from Body Shop, but anyway, I digress. Um, so oh God, the next you know one. Scent. Next one is Beyond the Sea. And I think this one probably, and this is the one with Jesse in it, Jesse Pinkman in it. Really enjoyed this one. I think it was probably my favourite. Um, Josh Hartnett as well, isn't it? Yeah, both looking quite old, but very, both looking very, very good for it. Um, the yeah. fourth one lost me, which is, it's called Maisie Day, and mm. not, yeah, not so much. The last one, fine, a little bit long, a little bit boring. But again, I, I didn't dislike it. All absolute top tier acting. All like you said, all the real high, high name actors and everything. It's mm. the trendy thing to be in as Black Mirror. And if you've watched it before, you'll like it. It's fine. It's not groundbreaking, but you won't get any of this, any of the absolute miss episodes either. My cousin's an extra in uh, one of the episodes of Black Mirror, and he won't tell me which one because <sighs> he does it anyway. He does it. You know. He's not a proper actor, he just does extra work in the side. I mean, that is still proper acting, guys. I'm not knocking it, Ouch. but he does it on the side and they were doing it where he lives down south. I don't know which one it was. He won't tell me. He says, watch it, see if you can spot me. He's probably just in the background pointing at something. <laughs> yeah, having a cup of tea or something. He's really tall, so if you've seen a really tall <laughs> Oh, my God, that guy. Actor, no, no idea. That's because of... <laughs> he might be sitting down. But Yeah. He might be sitting down, mate. I ain't got a clue. Guy in chair number four. He was in Emmerdale, and he was in um, he was in um, oh, what's that? What was that called? He was a zombie in that Big Brother zombie f- program years ago. Dead set. Remember that one? Dead set. Yeah, he was he was a zombie in that. So there you go. That's his IMDb. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I can't think of any. No, I don't think any of these <clears throat> episodes are really going to stick in your mind, like San Gina Perry or some of the. Uh... Ah, that's a shame. It's yeah. A shame, isn't it? But I, I like I like his uh, his screen wipes, his game wipes, and his um, I like I like Charlie Brooker's um, I like his commentary on the world mm-hmm. more than Black Mirror. See, yeah. I don't. I I like his writing and his shows. Mm. Don't really like mm. him. Don't like listening you know to him. No. no, I do. I think he's he's got a lot to say, which is good when and it's put mm. into a show like this. But mm-hmm. I don't like his condescending tone and the way he speaks just puts can't deal with it i do i think i'm just fucking broken mate no, i don't, no, even find, like I don't find him I particularly can't. condescending i find him just like sick i think he's of acting everything. when he's talking like that yeah i think he's acting he's playing up sick of everyone's shit like the, like everyone is really he's just not trying to hide it i think yeah. it's <laughs> yeah the same or like yeah. Stuart lee thing for me i don't get that like just kind of the <laughs> Stuart lee's great no i hate everything fuck off <laughs> do, you like, do you like Jack D and all? You what? Do you like Jack D? Jack D's all right. <laughs> I'm good. Let's go for the grumpy ones. <laughs> oh dear. Cool. Cool. Any more? Can you? Are you going to save it for green? I'll room? save it for the green room. I've got a couple up my sleeve, but we'll wait. Oof. Um, I'll go next. I wasted a a week on a show this week. I watched the entirety of the Full Monty. Series. Oh, is it shit? On Disney Plus. Is that new, is it? It's, it's shit. Yeah, brand new. Come out this week and I've watched them all. Um, what made Full Monty great in 1997 <clears throat> was how it took the world by storm. It, internationally, it was really good. And how it, for me then, it was a film about a place where I live, around the same similar areas. Do you know what I mean? People up north. Sheffield area, people skint because they shut the coal mines down and no one's got any work and everyone's at the job centre and stuff like that. And it worked and it was perfect and it was light-hearted. I don't know if you've seen the film Full Monty. You should do. It's, it's a great. It's milestone, especially in Britain. I think it's fantastic. Um, everyone in it's great. It's just perfect and it, it ends really good. It's got a happy ending. It's literally on my list. 
Yeah, it was <laughs> on my list of ending. films with happy endings. Like it leaves mm-hmm. you feeling kind of like it's a great ending. <clears throat> like they kind of yeah. they go ahead with it, they do it, and it leaves you with yeah, that was a great ending, and everyone's kind of in a good place by the end of it. Yeah. So like snap, snap cut to seventeen years later. I think it's seventeen, 17 about seventeen, sixteen, seventeen oh, yeah. years later. Jesus. You think, oh, what's happening to Gaz and the and the lads? It's just got worse for them. <laughs> not, not, nothing, nothing. They're all still skint. They're all hanging about. Um, they're all still going to the job centre. I mean, Gaz is the only one that's got a job actually. He works as a porter in a, in an hospital, but he's still. Um, and that, that's um, thingy. Um, what's his name? Um, Scottish guy that plays him. Robert Carlyle. Robert Carlyle. That's his character. Uh, and Mark Addy, and they're still got that love hate best mate relationship where they both hate each other, but they love each other at the same time. And. It, it, then it, the, 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 what the show does, what I do like and I do respect, is each episode is about one of the characters. The problem is, some of the episodes are about characters we didn't know from the film because they've brought in new characters that we don't care about <laughs> that are part of the Full Monty crew now, and it doesn't work for me because I didn't care about them. You know what I mean? I wanted to yeah. speak, and there was an issue in the the guy that played Guy. One of the the guy with a big dick from the film, something happened mid season and they had to take him off the show because he was a baddie behind the scenes. So he doesn't get his own episode. Obviously, makes sense. And there's one episode that I really it's a standout episode. It's about Horst, um, the Jamaican guy uh, who played uh, Denzel in Only Fools and Arses. That guy, yeah. He's got the best episode because he's probably the most well rounded character, and he's really old now. Because he was old then, wasn't he? Yeah. And he's really old now, and it's just a great episode about him trying to get to Castleford to Job Centre to claim Pip. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? The, the, when, when you're disabled and trying to get some money. And it's just a fascinating insight on if you've got no money and this the government that we've got now currently is, is requiring you to go above and beyond to prove that you can't go above and beyond, it's ridiculous. And I, th- I think that's a really good commentary on working-class Britain today under government we're in. But every other thing was about kids rebelling, like uh, Robert Carlyle's kid. Uh, not the young kid from the film, because he's older now. He's the same he actor. He has another kid. Everyone's the same actor. Yeah, everyone's, I was everyone's just looking, it. I was quite surprised, because usually uh, with, kid, yeah. with kid actors, they, they don't, no, same guy. They don't go back to him, do they? they just but he's an adult him. now. He's, a, he's yeah. He had another kid in the meantime, and she's... Um, She's at high school and she's rebellious like her dad was. Uh, she's mixed race, so she's got that to deal with as well and broken home and, oh, oh it's just, it, it's like it's like tame skins. Remember skins? Tamer than yeah. that. And it's just not fucking good. <laughs> apart, from, apart from that, that episode about horse. It's, it, he's, that's my favourite episode. And I do like it when Gaz is on it and stuff and he's doing his bits, but he's barely in it. He doesn't even get his own full episode. Do you know what I mean? Again, it's one of those things so like, look- did anyone ask this series? It's like, did it need one? That's just the current trend though, isn't it? It's legacy sequels. Everything is, let's take something from 20, yeah. 30 years ago, get the same actors in and redo it. Do you know how it felt to me? Or do a sequel it to it like- rather than a reboot. Yeah. It felt to me like the writers had a really good story about just like this kind of working class, but they wanted to attach it to something that's going to get people to watch it. Yeah. I And this sounds really strange to say, but I think this would have been better if it wasn't a full Monty show. Because I wanted that. You know what I mean? I'm spoiled for choice, obviously, because I think that film's fantastic. But like, I think Brastoff's fantastic. I don't want a Brastoff show. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't want a Rita Sue and Bob 2 series. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> forty years later, do you know? Well, I mean, that's a blast I don't need from the it. Past. Jesus, <laughs> but, but this is what I'm saying. I don't. I don't need that. I don't want a Kez too. It's just can't. I no, I can't. Really can't. <laughs> <laughs> but stuffed as a taxi it's like, the, 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 I think when things are, things are close about like this is England film to the this is England show that was a closer period of time and it worked perfectly. Yeah, and that's what I feel like this show was trying to. But 17 years later, they just had to make loads of shit up. But it's, it, it's also, a, to me, the full Monty, the draw of that film is 
is the full Monty, is the strip tease. Will they go ahead with it? They don't like, do it. Uh, they, I'm sorry to spoil it for you guys. Yeah, There's no but, stripping but in but this. But like, that's the whole draw of that film is that these down and look guys, yeah. like they, they bond, they come together, they do this thing to raise this money yeah. and, and, and they do it. And that's kind of the feel good part of the film. It's also what's, a play on masculinity, and sometimes you've got to like get rid of that, what's that shroud. The, what's the draw? Maybe you're right. Maybe they had this idea of like these working class That's families feels and like. people, and they just thought no one really wants to watch that kind of film right now with the way the country yeah. is. Let yeah. our TV show rather. Let's just attach an IP to it. Okay. I think I, I think Robert Carlyle did a lot of the writing and producing, but that's why he's probably not in it as much. He's really good, and you forget that he's. A, a, a Scottish man and not a native to Sheffield, and like Mark Addy's fantastic in this. He's probably he probably is the best actor in this. I mean, Robert Baratheon were a fantastic role as well, short lived, but he is really believable of because he's the only one that his life, what he thinks without spoiling it, is is fine. You know what I mean? His life were kind kind of fine in the film as well. If you remember, he had a nice house with his wife and stuff, but there's a darker side to it, and I just. This could have been a film for an hour and a half rather than seven, eight episodes of an hour. Do you know what I mean? It was dragged out. And, <clears throat> like, I know Sheffield very well, and they were really, really, really focused on the, the last rough estate on, in Sheffield. Do you know what I mean? There's not that many anymore. It's quite an up-and-coming city now, and it's the last proper, proper rough estate, which if you go down there now, them houses are all boarded up. Mm. No one lives there anymore. It's not... If you want to do that working class thing, you want to get even further north, you know what I mean? Like, fucking... Even way past Gadget, like Gadget's end. So there's some parts where really on border with Scotland and stuff that's really down and out. Mm. But, yeah, I, don't, I, think, I, think, I think, like I said, I think they were just trying to use the Full Monty name. I suspect... As, it's, internationally, it's, it, was a, it was a hit. Did you say it was Disney Plus? Yes. I suspect that was probably a push from them to try and get a slightly older generation to sign up for Disney because, you know, everything's kind of yeah. based on Marvel and um, Star There's Wars no Cox in it, though, Candy. Well, I'm out for that reason. But and yeah, that's the same no doing a doing the series rather than a film as well. They're not just going to pay for it for a month. They're going to keep paying it for it a couple of months and then forget to Oh, stop. no, it, they all, it all dropped at once. Oh, really? Well, anyway, yeah, it all dropped it at once. Then. The whole thing dropped at once. Hmm. Which is another weird thing. It's as if they didn't have any faith in it in the first place. They don't usually drop stuff like that. Yeah. Right, a peep behind the curtain. I've just had a power cut. Um, this is the second, the third part of this podcast I am now currently recording, <laughs> so I don't apologise. Um, the, the heavens have opened in West Yorkshire and um, the thunder god himself is coming down and pissing me right off. But yes, I was wrapping full Monty up. Don't waste your time with it. Um, <laughs> Sorry about that. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. Stig, what you been up to, mate? Uh, so I've watched a film called Blackberry, which I'm going to talk about in the Nexus Plus. So nice. If you want to listen to that, you'll need to subscribe to Patreon. Um, the other thing I've done this week is um, I've done something a bit silly. That's not like you. Oh, no. Oh, no. I have bought a Azus. <gasps> ROG Ally. Oh, did you do it, mate? Yeah. Oh, I want one. Um, nice. So this is replacing my Steam Deck. I still love the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck is brilliant. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it's a fantastic so machine. What's... Oh, I saw my Steam Deck. It's gone. Um, oh, right, right. I can't, I can't, yeah, I can't afford both. I've got to sell one to pay for the other. So, so you're, you're, you're treating that as like when you upgrade a PC, aren't you? Basically, yeah. It's just upgrading. Yeah, not wrong with that. So this is a new handheld device from Asus. Uh, it is a it runs a Windows 11 on there. So the biggest draw for me for nice. this was the ability to basically install and play all of my Epic Library, Steam, GOG, EA, play it. and Game Pass without having to stream. Wow. So I played. So this thing is. It, well, I'll get into that in a minute. Just this thing is brilliant. Like just the specs on it. Um, it's got a seven inch. It looks like, smaller screen, in a good way. 10, 1080 screen. It can do uh, one hundred twenty hertz uh, refresh rate. It has all these all these cool little options that you can get on it. So you can change. All you got to do is press this little command center button that's on there, and you in within 
like real time in the game. There's no like having to restart the game like you do. You know, you know when you're on the PlayStation, you want to switch between the two. You have to restart, yes. don't you? With this, you can literally just click a button, change the wattage and the operating mode, and it changes your game to that. Um, oh, that's fantastic. I sat, pl- finished, and played Journey on this this week. That's my two-hour game that I played. Nice. Yeah. That was lovely on this screen. I've been playing Hi-Fi Rush on this as well, getting 80 frames per second on Hi-Fi Rush on Woo-hoo! this little device. Um, awesome. And it, it's fantastic. Uh, there are things that the Steam Deck does better. Um, I think the Steam Deck buttons are slightly better, especially the triggers and the RB and LB button. These the Steam Decks, they're bigger and they've just got a bit more like space to move your fingers on, whereas these aren't. They're, they're kind of, especially the RB and LB, they're kind of just straight and flat and you don't have a lot of room to move your fingers around yeah, on them. Yeah, yeah. But it's lightweight. So, you know, when you held my Steam Deck, you said, I think yeah. one of the problems was the size and the weight. Yeah, that's this smaller. This is a it? lot smaller. It's a lot lighter. Uh, it still has like triggers on the back. Uh, it will last longer as well because it's newer. Yeah. Simpler. So the Steam Deck has four, this has two. I never used them anywhere, really. What I am using wow. these for, though, which is pretty cool, is little macro buttons. So if I'm playing a game, I can hold this button and press A, and it takes a screenshot, or it takes a video, or it does like nice. things. So I'm using that as well. Um, it has RGB lights. I saw that. Well. I love that. So if I, I don't know if you can see... Oh, you won't be able to see. Can you turn? turn so, can you can you turn them off to stop the battery drain? Yes, you can turn the the lights off if you want. They'd never. If I had that, they'd never be on. But you can change <laughs> them so they're not on. like flashing or rainbow. You can just put them as a normal color if you want. It has all different options. Does it have rumble? Do. It has rumble. It, yeah. Yeah. It has the ability to change between. So you can use this as a full fledged PC as well. Like if you put this into a dock, with yeah, you can then hook a mouse. You can hook it up to a monitor. I've, so you reckon if 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 I could convince the wife, I could get rid of my laptop, buy one of them, and say that's my new computer. Yeah. And could I could I do podcasts on that thing? Yeah, I've downloaded In Discord theory. and other stuff on this. Like been playing that, sit and watch YouTube on it. I've got all because that's Plus, the main question Netflix. I want to ask you. I want to ask you how do you convince your wife to get all these new gadgets without kicking off? I pay for it myself, uh, but also <laughs> <clears throat> the. This one I got sixteen percent off through work because I get um, yep. my work has like a scheme where you get like you can get money off certain shops. So yeah. Curry's had a ten percent pre order off. Then I got an extra six percent off because of my work thing. So I got sixteen percent off. I then randomly, this is just even better. I had some vouchers from uh, a cashback website which I didn't know about, and it was like, oh, I can use these vouchers for Curry's. So there's 85 yeah. quid worth of vouchers. So my Steam Deck, wow. so it's cost me £100 to oh, upgrade. Nice. That's all. Wow. That it? Yeah. That, that's awesome. After I've sold everything, got my discount and got these, yeah. these vouchers. I couldn't use them for anything else, so I just thought, fuck it, vouchers. No. Dude. So yeah, and... I've, but it's not a cheap bit of kit, is it? No, it's 699.99. It's It's a full-fledged yeah. PC, like if you get the dock and everything. I know, yeah, I know people have been said they've used it for PC stuff. I've, I'm using it as a gaming thing, so I've literally un- uninstalled all the Windows Office and yeah. shy off it. I don't care about that. Um, but it's 512 uh, gig hard drive. You can upgrade it if you want. It gives you, you, you are allowed to do that. Yeah, that biggie. I've got hey, a... I'm in. Five, <laughs> got a 512 gigabyte uh, S, uh, micro SD card in there. So I've got like a terabyte worth of stuff. That's more than enough because... Once I've finished a game, I should install and, and then reinstall. But mm. it's it's really great. The fidelity, uh, the refresh rate, the, the the frames per second you're getting out of this. I was playing Ori and the Will of the Wisps and getting 120 frames per second on it. Fucking wow. hell. Um, yeah, and the sound as well, the speakers in it. I know a lot of people play handhelds with earplugs, but if you aren't, this sounds so much better than the Steam Deck. Like the, the front facing. Yeah, the front facing. They've got pro- what you proper want. speakers in. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dolby Atmos. Um, oh, high res. Yeah. Uh, it's great. Honestly, it's um, the sound in it's brilliant. It's got these kind of like touch control buttons on the front where you can load into um, Asus Create thing game library there where you can kind of load up your launches. And. Mm. Yeah, you can assign. It's gonna last two years that as well now, isn't it? This will, yeah. Um, 
because mm. it's pretty much able to play most. It can play Diab- gen. It can play up to Diablo Diablo Four, and that's just just come out. It's fine Ma- with that. Imagine, do you reckon it could do FF sixteen? Oh, maybe if you were streaming from your PS Five. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Set, I've set oh, that up yeah. as well, so I have got that. I've got it set up so I can. Oh shit! It is exclusive in it for a year or something yeah. like that on Sony, but it will it will come out. But I can get because it's Windows based. The remote play is really easy. You just download the remote play app. And done. Oh, I've done it. I've done it on my laptop yeah. before. So, so I've got so. I've got PS Five remote play on there. And the only thing at the moment I haven't, I haven't reset up all my like retro uh, ROMs and whatever on there yet. When you get RetroArch, I've got it. I just it, it's a bit more yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a bit more fiddly than the Steam Deck. That was really easy to install because you just kind of have to down. Yeah, yeah. It's a Linux base, so you only all you had to do was download the app, kind of set it up, and yeah. it was done. Um, this is a bit mm. more fiddly. But I'm not really that bothered at the moment because. I've got all these other games that I want to play, and it's it's the Game Pass. As, as, as silly as that sounds, like so, couldn't the Steam Deck download Game Pass games? No, you had to play over Wi-Fi. Oh, all right, and that is a massive upgrade then. Yeah, download. Well, so yeah. I did play Hi-Fi really Rush good. over Wi-Fi. That's the biggest it downfall. Won't be good. It's it is not good. <laughs> oh, sure. Depending on your, um, it, it depends on what uh, what okay. age and performance mode you put it in yeah. and the game uh i'm playing a lot on turbo mode at the moment because i just turbo mode i've been at home <laughs> if i was if i was playing this on a train or a plane or something like that i'd drop it You'd down a bit down, you? but i've got a portable charger which is powerful enough yeah. to charge this while it's being played and the and the battery pack it comes with is like a chonky chonky boy so mm. if you play around the house you could just plug it in so you could literally play like current gen games, lay down in bed with a nice comfy device in front of your fucking eyes. I'm 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 very jealous. Yeah, well, High Five Rush is the newest game I've played on there, but I know people yeah. that I've played like say I know Diablo Four is obviously that isometric look down. It's not maybe not as, as taxing, but it's still I don't know, mate. There's a lot of enemies on screen. I was gonna say it's still like I, I mean in terms of maybe. Yeah, you know what I mean, like the graphics. But the graphics yes. in that are amazing anyway. And like you said, there's a lot going on on that, so it's still taxing, and people are still playing on that on it. Um, mm. But yeah, it's fucking great. I'm well happy with that. Oh, that's awesome, mate! Oh, 400 quid, mate! You can't fucking. Yeah, it. it's only just because of. Originally, what I was going to do was do like a buy now pay later, but because yeah, but because my work gives me that discount, if I paid out right, I got so much off, and then. I, mean, I like to call it buy now, ignore later. I mean. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I basically only had to pay the, have to pay this hundred pounds off. Went no. Off, so buy now, shout at Bayless. <laughs> sold my Steam Deck and everything. So cool. Yeah, cool. great. Well, I'm happy for you. Great I'm happy kit. for your new addition to the family. Kids touching it? Nope. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Well, they're sticky jam hands. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't have track pads like the um, Steam Deck did. So, but I have touch screen. But it's touch screen, and I found just using the thumb stick and the triggers for your mouse buttons. Fine. Yeah, works. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. It's awesome. Nice cool. Big hit. Stig Junior, little Stig Junior. Cool. Um, Biggie, round it off. Yeah, no, just kissing it. Not a massive busy week for me. I've been uh, watching uh, Cash Out. Not like you, that. No, I know. I've uh, been watching the Taskmaster. Uh, really nice. getting into that. I'm uh, to see. That that one that we watched at the podcast. Yes. Yeah, with celebrities do tasks right. and stuff. Uh, I've not. Yes, yeah, that was fu- that was funny. That before, so I've actually just it's on Netflix, by the way. So I'm just going through all the seasons on there. I'm uh, really enjoying it. There's a great one in uh, season two, I think it is, with Josh Widdicombe, where he gets set um, some tasks like counting how many baked beans in a tin or how many spaghetti hoops that are in a tin, and it turns out that he was the only one that was asked to do the tasks <laughs> separately to all the other stuff that they did. He was pretty. <laughs> That's funny. He was pretty miffed about that. That was quite funny. Or. Uh, Season four, I think it is, with Joe Lysett. And uh, there's a particular task where he was the only one that was asked to smile at the camera every 30 seconds that he was doing something. That's quite funny. They do a little... Uh, it is. When, when, they, when they get people rehash. doing that, because yeah, when it goes back that, to their reaction, funny. they're just like, fuck that. They're absolutely yeah. livid because they had to do this thing <laughs> that no one else has had to do. <laughs> but it's just really We watched that one watching. at Podcastle with that um, 
jo- is it John Wilkinson guy or Wilkinson? Yeah, he was really and he, funny. And he had to, he had to, he had to throw it, and he just did it in one. The potato, he throw it yeah, into that yeah, target. Yeah. yeah, he just went. He went. Oh, he went. Oh, can I go home? I'm like, yeah, go home. <laughs> yeah, until they, until <laughs> they caught, done. until they caught out that he stepped foot. over the line. He stepped over yeah, the line. Yeah. Really brutal. <laughs> but yeah, it's just yeah, a fun, easy to watch show. I've really enjoyed it. It's, it's been really good. I uh, highly recommend that. Uh, the other thing I did uh, over the weekend, okay. um, I got a 4K DVD out or Blu-ray, whatever you want to call the disc. And I watched yeah. one of my favorite movies, Black Hawk Down, but in 4K. And it's the Ooh. extended version as well. I don't, I don't really know what the difference was. I didn't look too much into it. But it's more shooting. Just what it's a, longer. What a stunning. <laughs> it's longer. <laughs> <laughs> what a stunning movie that is. Just. I know. I think it's frightening that movie. Do you know what? I was so tense watching it, and I've seen it three times, I think, at least. Before. It's like a horror film, mate. In some well, I, was, I was just of it. ripped. Fucking again, horrendous. Even though I know what's going to happen, I was still yeah. ripped. So good. Just, I think it's great. Really enjoyed that 4K sound bar was on. Just chilled out. and. I know, I know it's a, people see it as a gimmick and stuff. People see it as a gimmick, but like when I watched my 4K um, Blu ray Lord of the Rings trilogy and the Hobbit one, I'm just like. This is insane. This is fucking insane. I've got a sound bar under my monitor and stuff. I'm like, this is this is better than cinema. <laughs> it's like this is fucking brilliant. I was gonna say I mean, the atmosphere's not as good as cinema. I was gonna say if the Lord of the Rings extended trilogy at some point to watch with my daughter, I might now You gotta watch them at Christmas like everyone else. I might cheat and actually put them on before she's old enough to watch them, but no. I wanna see them in four K. But yeah, just so I just really appreciated the effort and just it's, it's such a great movie and it was just stunning. Uh, the sound, just everything. Did, just, yeah, did you it. see that I posted in Discord the Total Recall 4K transfer they've cut, put on Amazon Prime? Oh, yeah. It's insane. It's so it looks like it was filmed yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking insane. When they do it right, it's I'm, just... watching, I'm going, how, how? It's like you're watching something and it's like it's a bit like a, 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 a period piece because they, they all look like they're in 80s yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or early 90s. But it looks like it was filmed yesterday. I watched the whole thing and the, they've done something with the dubbing on the voices and stuff. Everything just, it's the best. Co- I mean, Prime have been doing loads of these conversions lately. And it's like you can watch the Expanse in normal HD or the 4K Ultra versions yeah. of them. It's like, why would you watch the normal ones? Expanse is so good. <laughs> and you can watch these. Oh, it's just, I, I just I, that's the best thing about Prime at the moment because there's nothing else good about it. But yeah, well, once <laughs> just, I navigate my way around menus on streaming services, I've kind of got used to doing that. But I actually got off my sofa and actually put a disc in for a change and really, really <laughs> feels good, doesn't it? Really appreciate it. Yeah, really top, top notch quality conversion. That it's a great film. Yeah, it's a great film. And I, I do love these companies that bring out these mega conversions because it's not as simple as just. Burning it to a Blu-ray disc. Well, I have a little bugbear about that because I still can't believe Alien is still the only one of the uh, let's call it a trilogy, yep. if you must. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that... It's never been it's never been transferred, has no. it? They keep saying it's coming, but which is mad because they can do it. Yeah. Mm. I'd love to see it. The technology's there. A lot of them use AI like padding and stuff like that on them now. It's just it's because Disney own it. the rights. They want people to go to Disney Plus. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah, did watch exactly. Aliens recently again as well. Um, and yeah, it's just I think awesome there's an IMAX again. version of one of the alien films on Disney Plus. Yeah, you got the special edition with really extended wide scenes ones. and stuff. But um yeah, still yeah. again another great movie. I know we talked about it before, but it, it really stands the test of time that it's such a great movie. So I want all films for me this week. from the eighties and nineties and seventies to be converted into four K Ultra H D. I'll be a happy man then. I'll stop playing games Unless then, it's, and just watch films um, for the rest of my life. Unless it's like a seventies gritty crime drama, because and it's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, you don't yeah, want to lose yeah. some of that. You're right, absolutely. You can't lose that. I don't. I don't need. A, I don't need a four K of The Godfather because it's not supposed to be, is it? Oh, like French Connection or yeah, Chinatown. Yeah. Like you need. You need that bit of grime yeah. to it. That's part of the charm. <laughs> Do them cigarette burns. Yeah, yeah, man. Four K version of oh, Sharon just... Stone's Woohoo for uh, basically. <laughs> oh mate, found the pew. Oh, oh, always have to go low, bro. <laughs> Basic Instinct. Do you know Basic Instinct is a terrible film? And people oh, seem to the the lord it over the others just because you can see a bit of fanny in it. Shit, it's so <laughs> shit. It's terrible. She's better in Total Recall. Trust me. In four K. <laughs> awesome, awesome. That's been our weeks. We're gonna have more to discuss in the green room. But now, um, it's time for our happy endings, and not the type of happy endings you guys are thinking. <laughs> And let me just let me just fucking warn you listeners now. Let me just warn you. 
here be spoilers. <laughs> here be spoilers. We are talking about the ending of books, films, games, fucking, I don't know, lives. This, don't moan at us. Do not come at us saying, I can't believe you spelled ending of that for me. That 90-year-old film. Ugh. Shut up. <laughs> Happy endings. Let's go. So, Stig. Let's just go. Start naming a few, yeah? Just having a little chat. Let's just start naming a few. Let's have a little chat. Right, so let's have a look at... Spoiler alert! So, <laughs> Full Monty, obviously, I've covered that one. Truman Show, we kind of talked about that last week as well. That's like a really great ending. I think that's where Gadget was coming from with his like, positive yeah. film, wasn't he? It's like, but it's more the ending that's the positivity. Yeah, the rest that. of the film was a bit dark, yeah, but the ending is like really uplifting. Great, where he's like, where he gets out. Um, yeah. Do you know what? This uh, Shawshank Redemption, obviously a fantastic ending. He gets out, he goes... I hope you don't read one of my, my, my main one out now. I'm, I'm getting a bit scared. I've just done a list here, really, rather than like just one specifically. Oh, no, he's going <laughs> to... Oh, so Shawshank, obviously, Andy Dufresne manages to escape and after he's escaped, he goes and f- meets. No, he, he, Red. Red goes and when Red gets out, he goes and meets him, doesn't he, on the beach? Yeah. Yes, because he's been he's, he's been out for a few years. Yeah. So just this wonderful tale of um a man wrongfully he crawled through a mile of shit. Yeah, imprisoned <laughs> and uh, managing to escape, and it's like the and managing to put the poster back on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The moment he like kind of gets out of the water, it's just kind of like ah, that is, ah yeah, it's yeah. it's a great moment and like it's such a really good feel good ending to that film because there's a lot of shit, it is horrible shit that happens in the film as well. That is yeah, that is a fucking dark film, but the ending just it's really worth that, it for payoff in it. Yeah, yeah, I do need to watch it's it. Not one for it's not one for kids. I can tell you now, especially ooh, God, there's some bits in that. Christ, not with the the gang, the sisters, sisters the sisters. Yeah, uh, this is. Oh, this is another one that's got a great happy ending. Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. Now I know that. Yeah, now I know that you could say a lot of Disney films. I can't. The whole point is happily ever after and having an ending. But a lot of them are kind of bittersweet as well, aren't they? So like you look at the Lion King. Like yes. Mufasa has to die to get there. He has to die. Cinderella, her dad has to die for her to get there. Snow White, her yeah. parents have to die to get there. Frozen, her their parents. Are, a lot of dead parents have to. <laughs> die to get martyrs, to where they are they? all over it whereas in Beauty and the Beast the only one that dies is the bad guy is Gaston and yeah. everyone else no one dies like Gaston no <laughs> <laughs> that's one way to go out <laughs> and, uh, but everyone else kind of you know all the, all the kind of creatures and, and they turn back to the staff they turn back to real people the Beast turns into the handsome prince uh, Bill gets. I prefer him as a beast. Way sexier as a beast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Bill gets to kind of live happily ever after with him. That the her yeah. dad is read books all her life. Yeah, her dad is fine, and it looks like there yeah. might be a little bit of something there in Mrs. Potts, like at the end. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's just a really good happy ever after for everyone, where no one has has to really suffer or die for the character to get there. So yes, really good, really good Disney, Disney film and good shout, and, and, good shout. Because when you think about it, there's not many where there isn't a sacrifice. Do you think yeah. in the bedroom for that emotional Beauty punch? turns around to the beast says, "Can you just put that mask on for us?" Yeah, definitely. I bet. I bet. Yeah. Do you reckon he had like she fell in love with reckon, the beast? Do you reckon he had like a red rocket when he was the beast? Oh god! <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do. Yeah, like a, like a dog, <laughs> like a lipstick, dog lipstick. Yeah. <laughs> what was he? Was he like a wil- a wildebeest? Or something. Like a, what were you, like a buffalo? Like a wolfy that, thing. Yeah. He had arms, though, like a buffalo yeah. or a wildebeest or a bison. I don't think so. He'd have, had, he'd have had one of them coiled ones that bison have got. <laughs> some coiled, <laughs> disgusting turkey twizzler thing. Bam. I wonder if he's so angry. There might be scenes where he's rubbing his eyes on the yeah. carpet a few times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's got it. <laughs> is, that, is that his accent? Yeah. His, his French accent. Back to the dingle oh, breeze that's again. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Great shout, great shout. Um, got a good ending. I mean, Paddington's Paddington. We know about that. Um, this yeah. one's a real life um, story. Like, so the ending in real life and the ending to this film is really happy and uplifting. It's in the Impossible. Yeah, yeah. with the with the flood, yeah, the tsunami. You and McGregor. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, the tsunami, Impossible sorry. is about the tsunami that hit. Was it two thousand and four? I think. 
Is yep. it? Yeah. yeah. Um, hit all the kind of in Asia, in Asia and the, the, the impossible is a story about a family who basically they were, holiday, they? Yeah, were on holiday and they all got split apart. So there was a, a father, a mom, and two young boys. Stars really young. Yeah. So this one stars like Tom Holland in it when he was like really young as well. Yeah. Nicole Kidman, Hugh yeah. McGregor. And yeah, the story is about them. They just got split up in this. They had no idea what, what was going on, whether they were like, the, the, they didn't know if the boys were alive. They didn't know if the parents were alive. No. Like no one knew what was going on. That like the country was in absolute chaos. And it's just like, which is real guys. Yeah, it happened. This actually happened. The story happened. And then the ending is like, they find each other and they, they managed to, find a way to get to each other and it's just a really good happy ending of these people. I like how the how the family were correspondents on that film and it's all bang accurate. Yeah, so the, uh, I think the only thing that changed was the nationality of the... The nationality. Of the family. Yeah. But, um, to make it Hollywood. Yeah, it's it's just a really, really good story. Like uh, It's a really good film. A really, really good film Like with a really great ending because, yeah. you know, it's real. They survived. and It's this- one of those films that if you watch before your, your parent, it's like, oh, it's a good film. When you're a parent, you're like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. no! Which leads me on to my next one. No. Uh, room. Yeah. So, Room with uh, Brie Larson and Jacob Trembler is a story of a woman who is kidnapped by this man and she's kind of forced to live in this shed, basically. This, 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 um, soundproof like room and shed that he's made and it's just, just, the, the, the story is terrible like he obviously rapes her and impregnates her and she has the baby in there and this this child has only ever known the room like yep, he's the room uh but i mean this is in the trailer as well which is really shit that they actually show that yes, they're getting out in like- the trailer but the end of the film is they get out and she manages to well as the boy's got a bit older now she could she convinced him right you have to play dead and yep. he will as he takes you out you need to when you've got a chance run struggle yeah fight remember back. where we are do all this to remember where we are get the police and that's what and there's just a moment where she is released and he's in the car and where they reunite outside of the room it's so uplifting at that point. and after all that shit yeah it absolutely destroyed me like one of the only films that like, make yeah. me cry ugly like, it's just yeah, so yeah, good. Yeah, it's, yeah, a, yeah. it's such a happy moment that these people got out of this shitty situation. Isn't it based on that true story of the German fella as well? No. What's his name? No. It's similar though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a similar kind of situation of being p- held in people. What's his name? That Fritzl. awful guy. Fritz, Fritzl. Fritzl. Oh, God. Yeah, it's very much that, kind of... I don't of, think that had an happy ending though, did it? No, it's a very much kind of that situation where this man's... Taking Awful. someone against their own, their own will, but the, yeah. So the the story, Ooh. the film in itself isn't a happy film, but the ending is happy. Similar yeah. to uh, I've, I've talked about this before again. Another film that makes me cry loads when the ending was Lion, the, uh, the yeah. Dev Patel film yeah, about yeah. the the boy who went missing when he was a young boy in India. Yeah, ended up getting um, adopted. This is a real life story as well. Ended up getting adopted by a family who. Um, mm-hmm take him away from all this and he grows up with them and then one random day a smell takes him back to his past and he remembers yeah. that smell and where he was when he remit that smell happened this this food and then he uses that to find out where he was and backtrack his life to find the village of where yeah. he came up and he uses that which is a phenomenon a phenomenon <laughs> that actually happens like yeah. sometimes a sound or a smell or just a signpost will just take you back. It's, it's fascinating, that guy. Yeah, I and do he, the and same. He... I end up outside Subway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. mine's the smell of like garlic sauce when I walk past the, uh, <laughs> the kebab house. But yeah, he just loves them hearty Italian loaves, doesn't he? That's that man. <laughs> <laughs> he loves them. The ending is uh, happy, but it's a bit, bit of sweet ending because the fact he finds out that his brother actually died that day that he went missing. That's why, yes. that's why his brother yes. never came back to him and how he ended up going missing. Yeah. So he was waiting for his brother, but if, I think it still fits the remit. He finds his mum and finds his sister and finds his his family. Yeah. He finds his birth family, and it's again. Yeah, I, I don't know what it was, but when he meets them, I just I just in floods of tears, and I just sat yeah. in bed. And they're not pissed off to see him. They they didn't give him away. No, 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 no. You know they they, they like, lost him. Like they, they lost him. Yeah, they're like, oh my fucking god. Yeah, it's like wow. Like, I'll just yeah, it's a good film. So those are films. Um, 
I didn't really get a lot for I don't, games and books. Um, yeah. So I'll go through some TV shows. You'll love this one, Oodles. Friends. <laughs> Friends ends. With every, you can spoil it's it. It's a very happy ending. Is it? Yes. So uh, Ross and Rachel finally get together. Uh, Phoebe and Mike get married. And Chand- I don't know Mike Chandler is, is uh, the Paul Rudd's character. He comes in last couple, la- last few that. series. And uh, Monica and Chandler, who discovered that they couldn't have biological children. Weren't they brother and sister? No, it's Ross and <laughs> Monica. All right, folks. So Chandler and Monica, yeah, they can't have kids, so they end up, but they end up adopting and getting these two, tw- oh, getting God. these two twins, and they decide to move out of the city to raise their family. Like Joey, because it's expensive as yeah, fucking. So. Joey's the only one that like doesn't have the kind of a, a relationship or family going into it, but he does then set off to pursue his dreams in Hollywood. So and has an awful uh, what, what's follow-up the actor? series instead. Um, Matt LeBlanc, the one that was on Top Gear. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The top, top Gear guy. Yeah. Uh, mm. The Good Place. They want to see The Good Place. Yeah, my, I, I've watched in there because my wife really liked it. I've been in and out. It's the one with the girl from Frozen in, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. I forgot. What, what, what I saw of it, is, is it Ted Danson? Ted it? Danson, yeah. And Chris... What I saw of it, he was brilliant What's in her it. What's her name? Her name just slipped me by now. Kristen Bell, is it? Kristen, Kristen Bell, that's it, yeah. Anna. It's... It's such a great show, and I don't kind of want to spoil the ending here because I think everyone should watch it. But the ending is just this. It's the heaven one, isn't it? Yeah, heaven and hell kind of thing. Yeah, it's a... yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it looked really good. It's, like it's really, values, really, really good. Acting it's really good. good. Acting's good. It's really funny. It's got some good twists in it. But the ending is just beautiful. It's just it, is it? Yeah. It, it... The ending is a point where pe- when people decide to go, they can go. So they're in this wow. purgatory, this good place and stuff. But, Limbo. Yeah, but. They just have this. It's time for me to go now, and they just that's. I might watch it past this point, and they go and yeah, I've heard the good ether and stuff. It. It's it's an incredible yeah, I might, show. I might, I might crack on that. Yeah, it's a really really that. good show. Uh, Shit's Creek ends really well. Where everyone is at the end of that, it's a brilliant show. Scrubs the same. We'll, we'll discount season nine that didn't happen. You've told me about that, where it's just like a random. It was meant to be a spin-off, but then they decided to call it. it never. Yeah, it was meant yeah. to be Scrubs interns. Uh, but then they decided to try and carry it on as Scrubs, just because of the name. Like they did with, like they did with Saved by the Bell, the new class. Yeah, it's, it just <laughs> didn't work. But the actual end of season eight is great. Everyone's in a good place. Like JD, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. gets that um, confirmation of how much that Doctor Cox actually does believe in him and believes he's a good doctor for all the ribbing and all the bullshit and all the kind of full bullying that he's given him over the years. He actually does respect yeah. him as a friend and a doctor, and he gets that. Oh wow! Yeah, he gets. There's a cruel, cruel to be kind yeah, thing. But like, the like, moment I'm, I'm your mentor. The moment is brilliant because he doesn't know JD's listening, and then really? yeah, oh, and then JD pops right. out, and he's just like, yeah, and he's just like, oh, f-. you get the look on your Doctor Cox's face, just like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the veil is drawn. Yeah. Oh no! But he's got this like rivalry with the janitor throughout the whole of Scrubs as well. And then right at the end, the janitor just kind of he gives him that like nod of respect at the end of everything. It all kind of comes oh, wow. full circle, and they go they go from these interns and um new kind of uh, shy doctors to being well respected and loved within that. I might hospital. watch Scrubs because I like Ted Lasso. Yeah, it's great. It is great. And it's the same vibe, innit? Yeah. And then similarly, um, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air as a TV show ends really Good well. Good ending. Really, really positive ending. Um, kind of, Will, he's spent his time there and he's and the ending is kind of them going off to, to move away, but then Will's kind of going off to do his own thing. You just get this kind of yeah. nice ending of him in the, in the um, empty room. He walks out, and that's kind of it. It's just a really nice, kind of uplifting ending for the character, for the characters in that show. Have you, have you, have you heard the fan theory about Fresh Prince of Bel Air, where he went on, he went on to not being able to get a job in pursuit of happiness, and then the world ended, and he became <laughs> well, that, that Robert. is actually <laughs> him. Robert. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's the same guy. <laughs> From from uh, I am Legend, and it's just like, he's just had a tough break since Uncle Phil died. It's just been it's been downhill from there. <laughs> I like that. Brilliant. I was on TikTok the other day. I'm like, this is great. The Will Smith Omniverse. Yeah. <laughs> which... 
but that's kind of it. Like, I, like there's, you know, like a lot of books I read, the fantasy books, they kind of end with the good guy, tend to end with the good guys winning, and because yeah, it's dissatisfying, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and same with like a lot of games you play, you you kind of end with the, the good guys <clears throat> tend to win and stuff. So I kind of want want to go with somewhere yeah. where it's a bit different. So that's yeah. mine. Cool, cool. I'll go next because this film. <sighs> It's probably my favourite happy ending of all time. It's not my favourite film. I think it's a very competent, good, well-acted film. But the ending of it, every single time I've watched this film, probably about four or five times, I've cried. And I think it's one for the boys, really. I can't imagine many, many, and I'm not being sexist at all, but many females crying about it because it's a proper man thing. So you've all seen Good Will Hunting? Mm. Nope. Right. I'm going to spoil Goodwill Hunting. So, I'm going to turn off because I actually want to... This is, I, I hate spoilers. Yes. This is why I don't like doing these. <laughs> I'm going to spoil it. So put, put, take your headset off. I'll tell you when you come, come back. So Goodwill Hunting is 1997, American psychological drama film directed by Gus Van Sant and written by Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. Um, Again, the cast is fantastic. So you've got Robin Williams, Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Stellan Skarsgård, Mini Driver. It's great. Um, the reason why I've picked this out of every, anything is because what it did, uh, you've, you've seen it, haven't you, Biggie? Yeah. I don't remember the ending, though. So, I've seen it. Right, I'll explain. So all the way through the film, it's, it's about Will, who's a genius, but because he lives in the uh, South Boston, he feels like he's got no prospects. And we've all, I don't know where you come from or anything like that, we've all felt like, we can't be better than we are. Do you know what I mean? We're all, we're, 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 we're all like punched down in life. It's just a natural thing for humans to do. Some people are beyond, like, you've got your fucking alpha males that think they're better than they actually are. But for most people, especially men, we punch down naturally. And the, the thing is with this film, like, this Will, uh, Matt Damon, is a mathematical genius, like, to the point where he can make Einstein look stupid. And he's just a janitor at the at the school and stuff, and he's solving. You know all that. Everyone knows all the scenes where he's solving the thing, but that's not the point. So there's two major moments. There's two kind of endings to this film that really sink in. So he has to go to uh, therapy with Robin Williams' character, who's a, a really renowned therapist. But uh, again, a therapist that's punching down. He doesn't think he is that good a therapist, but he is that good a therapist. And there's a scene where he's like, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. And this is a man. My name is like masculine man, really good, fighting. And you know what I mean? And he breaks down and starts crying and getting the biggest man hug that some men just need to do. Don't don't the big yeah, Some men that. just need a fucking hug from another man. It's different, especially if you have to have a dad and stuff. I've got massive. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I, I enjoy a hug that I had with you. Many hugs that weekend. But I, I, I've not had a dad, so I need that. That male figure and stuff like that. Like, like Gadget recently gave me a hug from across time and space when I was feeling down. He he bought me that game and he made me feel really good about myself. He's like, you can do it. You you you're struggling. You can do it. And I needed that hug. You know what I mean? And it's it's nowadays in 2023, it's quite open for men to discuss the feelings and stuff like that. But in 1997, not so much. Not men. Men had to be men. And that's a really good scene. And he falls in love with Minnie Driver, but he's scared that he falls in love with because he thinks that she's just going to hurt him because he's been hurt all his life. And at the end, the greatest thing happens where he lets go of that um, toxic masculinity. He goes off to chase the girl that's, that's gone off, the, 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 love, the only love of his life. And he leaves a little note for Robin Williams' character. He says, off to, off to get the girl. And... Robin Williams picks the note up, reads it, and he just because he stole my line. Straight away, I'm crying because it's like, that's such a massive thing. And then the best performance in this film is Ben Affleck. So halfway through the film, he speaks to Matt Damon. He says, do you know the best part of my day is when I, I, I pull up in the car, knock on your door to pick you up for work, and for that brief 30 seconds, I pray that you don't answer because that means I know You've gone off to be better. To be, I'm choking up now. <laughs> <laughs> that gets me this every fucking time. 
you're, you're going to be better. You can do better because you are better than what we are. We're just fucking petty crooks. We're just fucking South Boston boys. And that, that brief 30 seconds when you don't answer, I'm like, yes, he's gone away. And then I'm so happy. At the end of the film, he gets out of the car as normally. He goes and knocks on the door. And he doesn't... Oh, fuck it, I'm crap. I'm good. Oh, okay. He doesn't answer. He doesn't answer. And Ben Affleck just... He gives you this smile and he's like, yeah, I know he's fucking gone and he's got to... I don't remember it sake. now. He's gone on to do better things. He's gone on to make his life better and he just walks off and smiles and gets in camera. Come on, motherfuckers, let's go. He's other boys and it's just... I think it's the happiest fucking ending, but it's also super sad at the same... But it's, I think it's fucking perfect. And it's the best moment Ben Affleck's had in his career. <laughs> And it's literally a few... It wasn't Jaded, I don't even I think he speaks. That much. Jesus. And no, definitely not, <laughs> definitely not. And I just, I just think it's absolutely perfect, and especially as a man that struggles with his own identity, mental health and stuff like that, like all men do, and we're allowed to be like that now. We weren't allowed to be like that then, and I think it's such a massive moment, and people forget, because they all think about the fucking... How do you like them apples? Them type of bits in that film. You know, the famous bits. But that moment for me is, it was so important in my life. I didn't watch it in 1997. I watched it in like 2005 or something like that when I was a bit older. And it fucking made me stronger with my friends. Like, I've been in a situation where I've told someone, get out of this fucking village, mate. You're, you're amazing. You could do better than that. And when you've got your own mate crying on your shoulder saying, thank you, thank, I needed that push. And then I look out into the distance now and that person's, he lives in Bali, and he's got fucking an amazing family. He's got a massive house, and he's doing absolutely amazing. He's a doctor, and I feel like I were a part of his journey to give him that push that someone needs, and I think it's important. And that happy ending is, it can't be beaten. Can't be beaten. Right, Stig, you can come back. Wave at him. Everyone wave <laughs> at him. Stig! <laughs> Stig! Come on, come back. <laughs> oh. You miss me crying, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe you guys. I'm an end. emotional wreck after explaining that. But yeah, that is, it's so, it's so fucking pick. special. That You need to watch that film. You need to watch that film, Stig. Good will hunting. I don't know. I'm going to watch it again now. It's so, when you, when you, I'm not going to say it and spoil it again, Stig, but when you see that moment, you'll get why I was choking up then. I think it's just fucking perfect. And I hope anyone listening from that, from me being an absolute wreck, Watches it and comes back to me. Let let me know how you guys feel about it. Maybe I'm reading into it no, too no, much. No, no, not at all. But I, I, I remember the ending. I don't think I am. Oh, it's perfect. It's a shame but that yeah. the house Sorry, blew up. Candy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, dickhead. <laughs> There's no explosions in that. <laughs> candy, go on. Yeah, I've got a few. <sighs> like just one bouncing off sticks, kind of real life one. It's um. Another one was The Rescue as well. So there's a documentary and the film, and it's actually because of Stig that I watched oh, it. Oh, so good. And, the, yeah, that's the story of the um, the soccer team that got caught in the caves during the flood. And I think they were... I watched it because of Stig. Yeah, incredible. Just, like, I think we all, like, most of us know the story from when it was on the news, but we didn't know the sort of fine details and obviously all the... Yeah. By some miracle, all the kids oh. did get rescued after being... Un- I think they were underground for the best part of the month, weren't they? So yep. it, they were underground for maybe 10 days, then they were discovered. Um, but then it took them a further couple of weeks to get them out of there. And just sheer will of these and just talents of these divers as well. And the fact that they had to put these kids without telling the press, without really telling the parents as well, that they kind of had to um, put the kids under because otherwise they would just struggle and they would stress out and they would just never make it out of the caves. Just yeah. an absolute incredible. Miracle. How they managed to do what they did Unbelie- makes you just think the, the the human spirit. That's the proof of that human spirit. That is quintessential happy ending. Abs- yeah. Well, the, yeah, the, absolutely. it was everyone coming together as well. What even just it's not just yes. the diving team. It's like there is so no, no. much done within the mountains to 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 redivert the water to stop the caves filling up more. Like the the farmers who all agreed to have their like. Their fat, their land, and their profits just wiped out mm-hmm. because they had to redivert the water somewhere. And yeah, like no one, just you know, everyone came together and to save these, to you know, this teacher and these boys. 
and divers from around the world yeah. as well. They all flew in, yep. the greatest divers, and just all came together. And just mind blowing, isn't it? Thank God, managed to get them all out. Just watch the documentary as well. Yeah. That's really good. A really good. How oh, I did, I did a double yeah. bill. Yeah, that's exactly Fantastic. what I did too. Yeah, yeah, watch yeah. them both. And actually, the, the film is very much it's you know Hollywood. Absolutely, yeah, they, they've got it sort of spot on. <laughs> perfect, really. It's great. Um, it's great. Second one, the film and the book of the Martian. So Astro- yeah. astronaut gets yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. stuck on a stuck on Mars. He's back again. He's back on Matt Mars. Damon. Matt Damon. Um, <laughs> Same character. He's actually called Will Hunting in it. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> Captain. H- he went on to do that. Captain Hunting in the Martian. <laughs> Um, yeah, gets stuck on Mars without his crew after the uh, crew. If, uh, after the mission gets hit with oh, a fight, yeah, we're, fight dead. we're dead. Mission gets hit by a storm. Off they go. He's left to fend for himself <laughs> on Mars for six months before he manages to get the signal back to NASA, who then tell oh. then tell the original crew that he's still out there. The crew decide to effectively mutiny. They were nearly omen, all they basically mu- yeah. They basically mutiny. They go back to get him. By some miracle, he survives. Lives off, lives off shit potatoes. <laughs> Which is the best potatoes you can have. And he runs out of ketchup runs really fast. Runs out of ketchup so chips. fast. You'd be fucked stuck on Mars eating I'd chips. Be You'd be I'd fucked. Be dead. <laughs> She's it's like, not there's, no, there's nothing to dip them in. There's, <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing to eat. I, she just wanted to eat the ketchup and needed something to scoop the ketchup <laughs> in. There's no, there's no point being around. If, if I've only got potatoes, just no. Potatoes and barren landscapes, no, just send me out. Yeah. I mean, I That's love potatoes, but imagine like, Having to survive on just all day, every all day. day, every day, just potatoes. <laughs> I'd total recall myself. I just step out there. There weren't even like roast potatoes, the best form of potatoes either, which is the Fucking... ultimate. They're no goose fat, no, no, no dripping. <laughs> Potato, eat it like an apple. Gross. Nah. <laughs> anyway, the happy ending is he got to eat other food because uh, they managed to rescue him. Home. Yep. Against the odds. Do you know what? Do you know what? Um, and the book and that, it, 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 it based a lot of it on, like, and it. As much as I don't like jingoism and stuff like that and, and like nationalism, but the American uh, armed forces have a credo and, and a law that they will go back for just one no person. No man left behind. Hmm. No man I left behind. Go. And they're the, one of the only militaries on the planet that are that, that like, human life is that important. I mean, they'll, they'll kill 400 humans to save <laughs> that one human, unless, if you want to get into that. But I kind of like that. You know what I mean? And that's what you base that on. Like, mm. yeah, we we gotta get him. Mm. Life's life's more important than other four hundred lives. <laughs> yeah, American lives are more important. That's, I mean, that's happy ending aside, though. Like, if you ever read the books, the, the amount of detail that goes into the science of that is just—it's mm. just astounding, really. Like, obviously, he worked. Well, I would assume he worked with many scientists to figure this out, and he didn't just figure it all out by himself because he's in the wrong job if he did. But yeah, yeah, really, and, and not really, like, I do like sci-fi books, they tend to be my go-to, but this was really hard sci-fi. And then it, it's, it's uh, Especially when it gets to the botany stuff. Yeah, and just the fact that he's... We, we, like, some fucking herbology. Yeah, and just the fact that he's just slightly miscalculated um, oxygen levels and caused an explosion yeah. and everything, and just, yeah, l- love, the, love The Martian. I think it's a great film. It's fi- yeah, it's fine, it's great. The film is great. It mm. maybe lacked a little bit in comparison to the book, but... I can't think of that many films that don't, so we'll give that one a pass. It's a lot better than uh, its contemporary uh, Ad Astra, the the uh, Brad Pitt Ooh. one, which is fucking hell. That's dope. Oh, you can it? chuck um, if... Moon in there, can you? Moon, yeah, yeah isolation, yeah. Moon's, Moon's that's a good ending. That's got a old Sammy in it, and I love yeah. a bit of Sammy Rockwell, directed by David mm-hmm. Bowie. Son. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what else? Bowie Bowie. Yeah. Uh, well, it's School of Rock as well. Redemption story. Oh, yeah. Redemption story. He doesn't go to prison for kidnapping children. <laughs> no, not this time. Posing as a teacher. No, they all learn a little bit about themselves. He turns out to be an excellent teacher. That he really gets the best out of Mate, his I'm students. Telling you, he would go to fucking oh, we would prison, go to prison, prison so hard. <laughs> so hard. For, I mean, just for tax evasion for the, for the start. In general. <laughs> Never mind the kidnapping. They wouldn't care about that. The tax man doesn't get his fee that he's off. Yeah, oh, but he's, hard, he's hardcore. It, just imagine him in not court. hardcore. He's not lived hardcore. <laughs> yeah. He's not hardcore. Exactly. But it's a great film. Absolutely great film. Um, but my main pick, and this is so out of season, I apologise for this because it doesn't feel right to talk about this in the summer, but it's The Christmas Carol. 
the oh, Muppets Christmas, Christmas Carol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew where you're going. You said it's out of season. It's like yes, it's, either, it's either Muppets Christmas, Christmas Carol or uh, a Wonderful Life. It's like one of them. <laughs> yeah, no, Christmas Carol. It's just the you boy. What day is it? Oh, remember when we did that play? <laughs> No. Well. Can we please do that again? Something. It doesn't have to be that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh God, Candy, if you were there, <sighs> I was oh there in spirit. God, I, was so funny. I remember exactly what because I listened to both <laughs> versions as well. I listened to like the one that came out, and then was oh, it the a Patreon un- version? Like the version. uncut version. Oh my God. The version is amazing. What day is it? <laughs> Why is it well? It's Christmas Day. My ghost turned me going, into Yoda by the end randomly, of it. like because <laughs> he because he lost his spot. <laughs> <laughs> the Muppets version is the best version of that tale. It's not only the best version of it, but it's Michael Caine's best imagine. role as well. So tr- it was a true... Tr- I'd argue it probably is. <laughs> true redemption story. Absolutely. It's not just the bad guy getting his comeuppance and the singing. Like, oh. what more can you possibly ask for? We're Marley and Marley. Oh, so oh. good. Such a good film. Oh, God. I just... God. I'd watch that in summer. I don't care. I don't care. Oh, I love that. I, I just I every time it, it makes me smile. That like when the I think it's it's Christmas, Christmas, and there's that big muppet. He's just like, duh, 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 duh. <laughs> and he's like, he's just like shugging back and forth. Yeah, it's like he's not a muppet. He's just a bloke. Yeah, suit, it's, yeah but it's like a big. He's meant to be a big muppet, isn't he? But it just makes yeah. it just gets me every oh, time. God. Makes me smile every time. Oh, come in and know me better, man. So good. Do you know a, a thing about the actual tale, though, as well? Like the, the book. I should put that on last week's um, list. It wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't normal in them days to have a happy ending in a novel. Yeah. And it actually happening. Like, whoa. What do you know what I mean? Well, I did struggle a little bit, actually, with thinking. Because in my opinion, like the best endings, they are all a little bit bittersweet, I think. And I think that's, Sometimes, that yeah. is what makes a good ending. And it's hard to actually find like a true good ending. But yeah, I think this is. This is one of the few, and you can't beat the Muppets version. You just can't. Oh, it's the best version. Yeah, it's I can't anyone great. Says. I absolutely love it. I do. I think it's the best Muppets film. Yeah, as well. it is. yeah it's definitely the best Muppets yeah. film. Mm-hmm. I've not seen the I like, last I like, two. I like the Muppet film good, that they made. But... The, 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 I've seen not the one with Ricky Gervais, the one before that with Jason Segel. Yeah, that's mm. really good. Really good. But yeah, fucking, I love Muppets anyway. Fucking, ah, oh, Muppets are so good. Woo. Yeah, cool, 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 cool. Biggie. I went a bit old school. Lethal weapon. So, uh, Riggs and Myrtle. Uh, no. Um... <laughs> Commando gets his daughter back. <laughs> <laughs> no. Remember when I told you I'd kill you last? I lied. But the, these are really obvious choices, but it's the ones that it's I fine. think It's fine, all so... obvious choices, I think. Uh... <laughs> I've picked um, a few oldies. So the Karate Kid, I think, with um, right even if uh, Daniel LaRusso, when you review it now, and obviously because of the TV series, he actually comes across as a bit of a dick in the movie. But um, by the end, turns out he was a foul as well, but he still won. But by the end, in you know, he, he's basically. I think that guy in the background shouts out, um, "Put him in a body bag or whatever it is." That line. <laughs> they literally pretty much cripple him, and yet he. Is hopping away on his one leg, and then he manages to pull off that crane kick that he obviously um, practiced in the montage for ages. Yep. He pulls it off, and then Johnny goes. And- the whole film's a montage. Yeah, yeah Johnny <laughs> grabs- he he becomes a karate kid like master very quickly, <laughs> <laughs> very quick. And then Johnny goes and grabs the trophy and gives it to him, and he's like, "You're right, Larusso." And then. Uh, out, the, out in the car park, Crease gets his comeuppance as he uh, ends up punching windows. He doesn't learn from the first one. And as, well, as another, if you watch Cobra Kai, you know how the story goes. There's another crack at it and punches the second window. It still cracks me up. And then uh, <laughs> yeah, you end, end with the boop on the nose, which is pretty cool. Boop. Um, yeah. And then obviously Star Wars. Um, I've been listening to that podcast that you went. Which, you, which ending? You won't let me mention, but... Um, I think the the original Star Wars, why it ended up being number four when it first came out, which is obviously very confusing. New Hope. But yeah, Han returns out of the blue to save Luke and his, his shot clips Darth Vader. I, f- I think it's a sad ending because Chewbacca doesn't get a medal. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's the only weird thing out of the whole thing. I, I'm um, not quite sure why he doesn't get one. But yeah, I Luke think just because they don't see him as a human. Just to go back on your original <laughs> point, it was the fourth part in George's story, but. I, I believe away, yeah. that he didn't think that 
parts one, two, and three would translate well to cinema at that, that yeah. moment in time. So that's why right. he started there. I know he had it, he had it, he apparently he did have it all ready, didn't he? In his yeah, head, because there's an, he changed there's names an interview and with um, stuff. Mark Hamill and, and, and it, where he says, uh, they're talking about he didn't do any more and they said, oh, not going forward, but I believe there's, there's plans and there's a story be, that's yeah. set beforehand that's about Anakin Skywalker and stuff like they they knew about it back they changed, then. The, 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 they changed names, but apparently the, the, the like the story beats and stuff are more or less the same. But like Luke, well, Luke Scar- Star Killer and stuff. They changed names yeah. and stuff like that. Mm. But yeah, I think I think he knew that all along. And it, I, imagine being in the cinema in the seventies and come up Star Wars Episode Four. You're like fuck, <laughs> we hadn't seen the first three. Get out. <laughs> Yeah, this celebration. Because no one called it a new hope then. They just called it Star yeah, Wars, Star didn't they? Yeah. But after Luke hits the mm. target and the, celebra- the Death Star blows up, the celebration. Great shot, kid. That's one in a million. The medal ceremony. Chewie commands the room when he walks in. R2's repaired and he beeps he away. He doesn't get a medal. But yeah, it's, it, it's, it's just obviously <laughs> an uplifting. It, it's, it's a romp, isn't it? It's an adventure romp. It's a classic romp. The music as yeah, well, mate. Yeah, it, 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 it's such a great ending. And R2 going, he could have finished there. You know, it was done. Um, sp- it genuinely could have finished there. It could, it really yeah. could have. And speaking of ones that could have ended, mm. um, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. I think as a trilogy, it, it, did, oh, it, it did end there, didn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I don't think they, I, don't, I don't think it went on. I don't think it went any further. Yeah, it was a more. Um, but yeah, I th- they were young Indiana Jones, the show, but that were it. I love Raiders. <laughs> I like Temple of Doom, even though it's got issues. But then it finished perfectly. I can't fucking watch Temple of Doom anymore, me, mate. Oh, I watched can't. it the other week. I can't get, pa- it's got, I can't get it's past got all the white people it, browned it, up. It's got issues. <laughs> I can't do it. But yeah, the the uh, the ending where once they come out, um, they're all on their horses, and then uh, Sean Connery turns around it's to brilliant. him and says, "After you, Junior." And uh, after your Junior, Santa goes, Junior. "Henry J- Junior." Why do you keep calling him Junior? And he goes, "I like Indiana," and then. Henry Jones says, we named the dog Indiana. And then Sailor goes, the dog? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, go, he rides off into... <laughs> and he goes, oh, fond memories. And then uh, Marcus goes, I know the way, follow me. Yeah! And then... <laughs> it's perfect. The score comes in. They're right, they go, they're right off in the horses to the sunset. And it's... Such a good film. Perfect. It's my favourite Indiana Jones, the third one. It's the... I'm first one. between man. one and three. But yeah, it's... Uh, the perfect ending. Too many snakes in first one. Yeah, that's it. You know. Uh, but yeah, funny enough, uh, Stig mentioned Journey um, from the video game perspective. Uh, I-, I think it's a great ending. I think once you reach the summit and the, the star goes off through the caves, you'll... Oh, so it's actually what you do actually do get to the mountain. That you do get to the, the mountain. And then that's when it reveals all the names ah. of the people that you've been playing with that you didn't realise. Oh, oh, see, I think it's a cool. I didn't get that. I got yeah. two. I got... Two people, because you've been so people still you've play interacted it. with these people. Yeah. So I don't know when, but apparently I had done. They might have been behind you. Just I mean, it's a bit of sweet, and you, you you die on the mountain. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, bloody hell. Um, the other one, I, the other one I picked was the the final mission in Mass Effect Two. Uh, I have issues with this because I actually lost somebody in that mission. But when I play it again, I'm going to make sure I get the full. Compliment of the people that made this that is final again mission. not a flex. I re- I remember playing that at the same time as everyone else did when it first came out on Xbox 360, yeah. and I somehow because how I play games I just hundred percent them. I saved everyone mm. with luck without cheating, and I remember I remember going. I don't know if it, it might have been college at the time and going. I've just done that final mission. They're like, oh, who, who died? I'm like, what do you mean you died? <laughs> yeah. Nobody died. I lost the And they had Ali. really like bittersweet endings. And I, I was like, oh no, we just fucking beat them. I was like, how, <laughs> how, how did I lose it? What did I do wrong? Because you were still in my party. So I thought he's, 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 I missed something. If, if you, I, think, I think you're supposed to, you've got to do everyone's side missions, yeah. haven't you? And then you've got to place them in the perfect, what what suits their powers. Yeah. And I just did, just randomly. And I, to this day, I've never lost that. I know you can lose them all, can't you? Or something stupid. Yeah, so when I replay that uh, at some point, I'm going to definitely uh, try and get the full comp. Get that trilogy that's out. It's apparently a good um, part. But yeah, I've got it. Um, I played the first one uh, yeah, last yeah, year, yeah. Or whatever it was. But yeah. Uh, oh. It's not a very good first one anymore, is it? No, they've done their best to uh, <laughs> they done make their best. it playable, shall we say. But yeah, I think the, the second game is definitely the best out of the three. And that ending is just perfect. Easy. Easy, mate. And... Uh, we, we touched upon it the other week when we talked about Uncharted 4. Just a wonderful, again, perfect ending to the series. And I hope they don't make any more. I think that was 
perfectly fine where they left it. Do, do, do you know what I really like about Uncharted Four is like, not we know what Naughty Dog are like. They could have had Helena just leave Nathan because she was so pissed off at him, wasn't she? She was so pissed off. He just lied to her for like a full game, and then we smash cut to where they have Cassie, the daughter, and she's looking through the photo yeah. albums and. You can spend a long time as Cassie looking through the house and they live on the beach in Hawaii. I did. And it's just, it's perfect. Yeah. It's a nice summary of all the, that's why, the previous adventures. That's why when they did that DLC side add on thing, it didn't, Nathan didn't appear. It didn't need to appear. He'd done. He was done. And I think, I, I think like everyone's like, oh, we're going to get an Uncharted playing as Cassie Drake. Like, I don't think we ever should. No. Who knows? Who knows what direction done. Naughty Dog go in? But yeah, I agree. I, I think it's a perfect ending. They don't need to do any more with that at all. Yeah, I agree. It's a lovely ending, especially for games. They're not some some endings are like yeah, you beat the final boss credits, but that's a proper like epilogue in it. And uh, as as it's Candy touched upon earlier as well, just the sort of bit sweet endings. Um, and I've mentioned it before. The ending to uh, Six Feet Under. We find out what happens to every character in the series. Oh yeah, I put that on my list. I've forgotten. Yeah, it's yeah. a great ending. I just really like the way that you you kind of saw what happened to everybody, and I thought it was a nice way to do it. Mm, yeah, so that, they're my choices. That was such a good show, that. Cool, cool, cool. Do we have any feedback? Has anyone else had a happy ending before? Apparently, quite a few people have. So we've got. Um, oh, yeah. So Mike H writes in saying his favourite happy ending film is Benny and June, a 1993 romantic comedy directed by Jeremiah S. Kachek, starring Mary Stewart Masterton as June, Aidan Quinn as Benny, Julianne Moore as Ruthie, and Johnny Depp as Sam. Benny, who cares for his mentally disturbed sister June, also welcomes the eccentric Sam into his home at June's request. Sam, who bases himself off Buster Keaton, entertains June while he dreams of a job at the video store. Once Benny realises June and Sam have started a relationship, he kicks Sam out of the house. This leads to an altercation between brother and sister. June runs away with Sam, who soon realises that she may need more support than he alone can provide. Ruthie, who runs the diner, provides a love interest for Benny. Spoilers. Benny mm. takes June to a care home <laughs> and soon realises his mistake and recruits Sam to, be, to help June, who is really struggling. He pleads with her that Sam is there and wants to be with her, and she... She doesn't believe it until Sam swings past the window on a pendulum outside and they finish the film living together and making grilled cheese sandwiches using an iron. <clears throat> yeah. It's a great film. One from Super Natty Cat here. This is a good one. Oh, no, you, sh- you, sh- you should watch it. You should w- definitely watch it. I agree with him. Super Natty Cat says, the end of Piranha 3DD. Literally the exit. <laughs> <laughs> I've not That's, seen this. This is why I love this girl. Literally the exit song... Exit song goes, whoa, it's a good day. And there's literally a massacred theme park of bodies surrounding the heroes of the film. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. Does this count? Nah, but in all seriousness, the happiest ending I can think of off the top of my head is up. Oh, not a happy beginning, I might add. Um, <laughs> no. That's, that's me speaking, that not her. After all my fertility rubbish, I now skip the beginning of the movie because it's too close to home. But Disney has such a way of telling the most beautiful love story in 50 seconds flat. Ellie and Carl do in five minutes what Twilight couldn't do in five fucking movies. Then you have Russell, who, (laughs) reading between the lines, has a broken relationship with his dad, and Doug is disowned by his owner. But come the end of the movie, all three make such a tight bond, it never fails to make me cry happy tears when they end the movie with Carl and Russell simply eating ice cream on the pavement, counting cars driving past. Mm. And then we get to see Ellie's house sat in the exact spot on the falls she wanted to visit. Moi, c'est magnifique, she says. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it is a good ending, actually, that. I don't like the middle of that film. I like the beginning and the end. I like the I like beginning the and the, I don't really remember much of the rest of it. It's when they're after that snipe. Yeah, I remember the, I remember the dog having all like the a dogs of, thing. All the dogs talk. Yeah, that's what I remember. Oh, that's quite funny. <sighs> yeah, it's all right. There's, a new, there's a new shark coming out called Carl's Date. It's his first date ever after... Uh, nice. Like, now he's got back after, like, um, he's back where he's at. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, his yeah. first date since uh, she died. Oh, God. Pixar shorts oh. just absolutely kill me. Do you see the one about the, um, I think it's the mountain or like a volcano coming out of the Y and C? Oh, yeah. it's so good. Sake. It's so fucking, they are, they are masters of short films. And the uh, dumpling as well. Oh, God. That, oh, oh yeah. I'm crying. <laughs> oh, fuck. The birds on the wire. They know what to do in, a, in 10 minutes. Yeah. Birds on the wire. Oh. Snowball anyway, in the ball, snowball. 
<laughs> yeah. Lee Davis says, for me, the ultimate feel-good ending is A Christmas Carol. Yes, Lee. I've seen so many versions over the years and read the book a number of times. The one I watch every year is The Muppets. But I actually find... Because it's the best, best one. one. But I actually find the 1950s Scrooge the most moving. The one with Alistair Sim. Mm. The whole vibe is much more yeah, spooky and sad compared to The Muppets Christmas Carol, which, which gives the whole turning good thing much more weight. The bit where he goes to his nephew's Christmas dinner has me welling up every time. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I, I, I think it goes Muppets, Scrooge, Scrooge uh, um, Bill Murray, Scrooge, then that one, then that one probably. Yeah, that works. That works for me. That's the top trilogy of uh, Christmas Carol. You could watch them all mm. and you get a little bit from each of them. No, and the Jim isn't... Carrey one. I've not seen I've not seen it, but there was, there was one, one there. I need to. I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> yeah, there were. <clears throat> I think there was, yeah. yeah. Ours was in the top three, but it's missing time now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we could redo it. Fine. We could remaster it in 4K. Finally, Angry Kurt says, Hi, Emmy crew. Crew. Before I get into my choice, I want to make a prediction that one of you, probably Biggie, is going to come up with a choice that everyone is going to find hilarious as a choice for a happy ending. Something like Requiem for a no. Dream. <laughs> <laughs> Human was, was well, for No, we didn't. It was Super Natty Cat that came in with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, Biggie was well behaved today. My choice is the film Monsters, Inc. All Disney films have, have, have happy endings. Oh, yeah. But I just really liked how this one was done, whereby the energy source from scaring the kids was changed so that it used their laugh mm. instead. Plus, it was a nice ending for all the main characters. Cheers, Kurt. Good choice. No, he's bang on the money with that. That is yeah, such a... That's a great ending. Oh, that's a great ending. Mm-hmm. And I even like Monsters University. I know it's a prequel, but I really like that. I do not. <laughs> I know you don't. I know you don't, but I think it's great. God, I love Monsters, Inc. So good. What the fuck? Thank, thank, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Thank you very much for your feedback, guys. And uh, as always, links to all our extracurricular activities are in our show notes and at modernescapism.co.uk. Please consider becoming a patron because we've got loads more to talk about after that paywall gets erected. Um, next week, it's our final episode of Modern Escapism 2.0. And it's a patron's choice episode. So as patrons, you will pick the final of this current iteration of Modern Escapism. After that, 3.0 launches. We've discussed that with you all. We're going to have tighter, shorter episodes. We're going to have Nexus episodes. A week later, we're going to have feature episodes. We're going to split it. You're going to get the same great content. Patrons are not going to be affected as much because you're still going to get all your bonus stuff. You're still going to get the green room and stuff like that but for the scrubs the freeloaders it's going to be slightly different for you guys but it's still going to be the great content just spread out we don't want to be doing this till 12 o'clock every sunday night anymore we just can't it's fucking killing us and gadget editing it uh anyone editing stuff it's just we give too much content out for free i'm getting old now i need to be in bed i'm 38 it's bedtime yeah, for me so Oh, you're 21. It's the, it's, it's, oh, yeah, 21. Sorry, 21. So, pa- patrons, you're going you're to see that going list for when we put it. <laughs> yeah, when we put it up, pick a banger for the last iteration of 2.0. Pick an absolute banger. Do your best. Speak amongst yourselves. Pick the best one because we're going to go out with a bang. So, yeah, that is the episode. Like and we're finishing. Ha- Oh, we're not finishing. We're just re- we- we're-, we're renewing. We're, we're refreshing. Upgrading that's our hard drive. Don't worry. That's what we do. That's it. Yeah. Cheers, pal. Yes, it's not going to be a happy ending for people that are not paying. This is the end of the show, but for you patrons, we'll see you in a few seconds. For everyone else, bye. 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 Boy. <laughs> the fucking maggots. <laughs> <laughs> cut that, cut that, cut that, cut that. <laughs> cut that out, cut that out, I love them.